Tehsin, first of all, thank you so much for making it all the way here. Thank you so much for having me. You are as good looking in person as you are on a camera. I accept that. <laughs> <laughs> no qualms about that. No qualms about it. I totally take that. Totally accept it. But tell me, like, how how is it? I, may I ask how old you are? A uh, forty. You forty. Forty. How how do you maintain yourself at forty like this? Reverse aging. I'm reverse aging. Like actively reverse aging. I'm actively reverse like aging. Like Brian Johnson reverse aging. Yes, and and if you see uh, my parameters, they are now of a 28, 29 year old. I am 28, 29. Yeah, so we're fit. Shit, Equal dude. Equal. Let's go. Yeah. Let's play cricket together. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, like, so, uh, we can we can play cricket, tennis, whatever. I could run. And how are you doing this? One meal a day, cold showers, okay. meditation. What kind of meditation? Tantric. Acha. and tantric tantric sadhana meditation Ta- tantric sadhana meditation meditation all t- sorts of meditation huh. i love exploring meditation huh. but tantric sadhana is something that i'm very attracted to particularly bhairava huh. so with bhairava out there so those meditations early morning 4 to 5 is my meditation time no matter what time i sleep huh. cold water showers and um, one meal a day for the last i no sugar how I've, long has this been forever now i don't even remember how long sugar has been about one and a half years but one meal a day is now been forever and i'll tell you the best part about it there's a science to it it's not just about uh, it's not numbo jumbo what is aging aging is lack of muscles your muscles start dying and internally your cells start uh, dying that right. is aging yeah physically and internally what uh, if you work out which i do then your muscles grow which means you maintain your muscle age and you sort of look younger now internally how do you extend your cell life your cells will die so the idea is to prolong your cell life because if your cells continue to pr- uh, keep producing time and again and they produce unlimited that's cancer that's cancer right? right yeah so you want your cell to elongate its life and fight whatever suffering it's getting thinking that it cannot produce a new cell hmm. that is reverse aging hmm. so when you when your cell does not get enough food or gets cold shower or cold atmosphere or cold or a hot atmosphere right your cell is now under some sort of stress and it realizes it has to fight to safeguard your body right so the elongation of your cell life i'm talking very basic right 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 and your muscle mass your extension of your muscle mass right. is reverse aging in short ha huh. so That's it's muscle and then cell life yeah so muscle mass you have to work out right or do some sort of physical activity sure even if it's walking right i work out i walk i run okay for my cell life to increase one meal a day meditation cold water shower now that does not mean you get into a cold water shower right away on the first day right. you can start with hot come to warm cold now i'm at a stage where i go cold water showers but it started with hot warm cold and mm. that's it gradually you extend the duration your body must your bo- cell must be forced to react mm. it must be forced to defend itself mm. then it will extend its uh, life now this is a theory mm-hmm. it's not completely accepted as science right. it's working for me clearly look at me right and my parameters <laughs> i love the confidence and yes. my parameters are that of a 28 29 year old hmm. whether it's my heart parameters whether it's my other parameters they're all perfect so hmm. and did it like is it like a two year spell in which you've reversed aging to this extent yes a okay. two year spell particularly giving up sugar helped huh. and of course i don't do alcohol i don't smoke i don't do drugs don't do drugs drugs are very bad Sure. So I don't do any of that. Yes. Yeah, don't do don't. drugs. Yeah, we all we don't we don't <laughs> do drugs. <laughs> we don't do those. Yeah. ठीक है हाँ. Um, it's very interesting because I remember uh, actually being a lot into this. So autophagy, this uh, uh, putting your sort of cells through pressures of yeah. hot saunas and cold showers Correct. and ice baths. Um, there is this fellow called David Sinclair at Harvard who does a That's lot of research. That's true. Right. That's the one I'm following, and he has all this research around rapamycin and Correct. resveratrol and glutathione that also reverse aging and stuff That's like true. that. Are you on some supplemental regime? No, I'm not on a supplemental regime. Okay. Simply because right now my uh, supplements and my food uh, in my food are enough to sustain me. Mm-hmm. I do, of course, take uh, a vitamin D. All Indians have a shortage, or most Indians have a shortage of vitamin D. That's something I take, but I'm not on supplements. Supplements per sure. se. Mm-hmm. But uh, my workout is very, very uh, heavy. Okay. Yeah, I work out very extensively. Even if it's for forty-five, fifty minutes, it's a very extensive workout. Like, what do you do? Uh, I do one body part a day, but along with that, I do something called Tabata, which is a mm. Japanese form of training, which is only for four minutes or five minutes. That completely exhausts me. That completely breaks my muscles down, breaks my um, cardiac uh, uh, system down completely, and I'm exhausted at the end of the day. So if I'm doing, if I'm doing, for example, biceps and Tabata. 
I'll do twenty hmm. seconds, ten seconds rest. Twenty seconds, ten seconds rest. Eight sets, four minutes, and you're finished. Oh, that's so interesting. Or if you're running on the treadmill, right? Twenty seconds, rest for ten minutes. Twenty seconds, sprint, rest for ten minutes. Twenty seconds, sprint. Twenty rest. ten seconds, not minutes. Tw- no, ah, no, twenty ah, seconds. Sorry. Yeah, twenty seconds. You rush, right. sprint, then rest for ten seconds. Then you sprint for twenty seconds. Then you rest for ten seconds. Ah. Then you rest, uh, run for twenty seconds. Then you rest for ten seconds. And four minutes, you are finished. That's all your cardio, or any of my part after my main body workout. So I do legs, then I'll do Tabata. I do cardio, I do Tabata. Those four minutes are super intensive. That's Tabata. But mm. warning, it's a lot of pressure on your heart. You have to be fit. You have to be at a certain region because suddenly your heart rate is going that high mm. and coming that low. Right. So you got to have a good heart, right. which also then makes your heart okay. Right, 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 right. Yeah, that so is the whole like put the pressure and then relax. Put it, the right. pressure and relax. Right. So Tabata is very, very intensive, and I love that sort of a training. So that four minutes is more intensive than my forty minutes or forty-five minutes of actual training. Huh. Yeah. It, squats twenty seconds, then rest ten, twenty, and you're doing complete squats. You're going down all the way range of motion, full range of motion, and you come up. Your my glutes are actually burning at the end of a day. I'm walking mm. like a frog then. <laughs> <laughs> that is quite a sight. We need a video of this. No video of that. <laughs> But tell me, okay, sorry, this is a tangent I didn't expect to pick. But yeah. like, you said, you know, you don't put pressures on your heart. And ever since COVID, yeah. I've become so sensitive to this heart issue. Yeah. Partly because there is all this rumor sort of mongering, maybe actually scientific rumor mongering about the vaccine being a cause of like heart mortality and stuff like that. Do you have an opinion on this at all? I do. Yes. Actually, the vaccine is uh, the two vaccines in India. Right. Uh, Covishield and Covaxin. Mm-hmm. Covishield was of course made by Astra. They seem to be decently uh, decent. They've gone through all the trials, and Oxford and Astra seems to have done a good job. Unlike the the other maxi, uh, vaccine, the other ones, the Moderna and the uh, and the other one, the one with uh, the one in the US. So there was Moderna. There was Moderna Pfizer. Pfizer. Yeah. So unlike these, Astra seems to have less problems. However, we don't have long term study on the effects of this vaccine on our heart. Right. I admit to that. Right. But the data of Indians who are suddenly getting a lot of heart attack, the problem, the the thing out there is India always as a nation. When I say India, I mean India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, mm-hmm. Southeast Asia, always had the highest cardiac arrests in the world. Data shows that. Mm-hmm. In fact, people in Caribbean who've been there for two generations, three generations, where heart attacks are less, people of Indian descent, again, I mean Indian, Pakistani, Bangladeshi, seem to have higher rate of cardiac arrests than the local than population. The, than the local population. That is in our genes. That's in our DNA. And this, combined with India having sixty percent of the heart attacks in the world, forty percent of those are amongst people below the age of forty-five. I think what's happened after COVID, and this is my reasoning, is because social media is so active, and you're seeing these cases, and now you have CCTV camera everywhere. So someone's falling down in the gym, someone's falling down dancing. These ca- these cases are now more on social media, and therefore it is much more awareness. But the data prime FSI seems to be the same as what it was pre-COVID. Hmm. That does not mean that the COVID vaccines should not undergo long-term tests. I think they should. We should be clear about it. Hmm. I, for one, have got four vaccines. Hmm. COVID. Yeah, yeah. I took uh, the two shots. You committed. Two, yeah, yeah. Very. Uh-huh, okay. And and others a friend. I trust him. Oh, okay. He's a yeah, friend. He's too, friend. Right. And and I got the boost. I got two booster shots. Sure. I've been fine. But. I don't, but I think they should still be long-term effects that have to be studied. But Prima FSI data seems to be it's the same uh, number. Maybe there might be a slight increase. I don't know. It's only being reflected a lot more because of social media. Hmm. However, India has a serious, serious problem of heart attacks now in our younger population, and that's compounded with diabetes. Hmm. That's compounded with malnutrition and hypertension and hypertension. Right. Yes, and malnutrition. Right. So you could be very, very. You could be middle class. You could be eating eighteen hundred calories and still be malnourished, because you're nutritionally malnourished. You don't have protein enough or like a specific nutrient enough. That's macro. true. That's right. what the report said. Huh. That India is a malnourished country, which unfortunately in our politics, the government said, "Oh, everyone's getting eighteen hundred calories. I'm to sab ko chawal aur dal, uh, chawal aur uh, bajra aur wo de re, gehu de re. We are giving wheat and rice." And the opposition said, "Everyone's hungry." Hmm. No, everyone's not hungry. But a large population is malnourished. Now, nor does the government want to address it, nor does the opposition want to address it. We have a protein deficiency, a serious protein deficiency in our country. Spot on. Let me pause this conversation for a second to remind you the subscribe button is right underneath the video. 
and if you haven't pressed it what are you doing what are you waiting for you're loving this conversation you enjoy this you want to watch more of this so press the subscribe button and press the bell icon right next to it so i can see you around for more conversations just like this you know what uh, behind closed doors there is a specific individual um who i think we both might know and i was speaking to him about this very issue he's like have you ever gone to a place where you know daily wage laborers are picked up and have you seen why they are so short and skinny and then can you look me in the eye and say india does not have a nourishment issue and i was like that is a very like he's like look at yourself you're 6 feet tall yes. built like a rock do you think most people in india are like that That's and true. why are they not and that is largely because there's a heavy protein deficiency and his view was it's because of an insistence on eating vegetarian food over and over that's true hmm uh i have no problem with vegetarian food or being vegan oh, i love vegetarian yeah. food yeah so do i once a month <laughs> <laughs> please don't give it to me twice a month <laughs> okay right. but 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 okay but i do uh, but during uh, navratra i do i'm vegetarian for 18 days 9 mm. and 9 mm-hmm. twice a year right but uh, the point is you're right about these libras India is the only country in the world where the average height hasn't gone up. Hmm. Everywhere else across the world, the average citizen has grown to grown uh, grown taller, hmm. except in India. That's a That's very a interesting fact. Now, why should it be that these kids are malnourished? Now, it is in the interest of the nation to have healthy children so that we can grow and be more prosperous economically. This insistence on vegetarianism. this actual moral policing on vegetarianism is causing us dearly it's causing us health wise it's causing us on other parameters and we have children who are skidding hmm. who are not tall who are malnourished who have other problems and these symptoms then grow worse as they grow older hmm. and that's a serious issue like alebros like you right the person rightly pointed out hmm. that's a serious issue you and i are not average we are working out we are taking in protein even if we are vegetarian we are taking in our amount of protein they aren't that is the problem and we have a serious protein deficiency which no one's ready to address very often on tv when i bring this up with the bjp and i say this to the bjp because bjp supporters tend to moral police on this they want everything to be vegetarian or they try to make it vegetarian they say oh, but hum dal de rahe hmm. but dal aap kitna khaoge and you understand because you're a fit guy you're a young you. fit good looking guy you know mm-hmm. and you work out clearly yeah. or you yeah i work out how much protein are you going to get in dal nothing correct no very near Mm. We are not now in Maharashtra. They said, "Oh, uh, eggs will not be given in midday meals." Mm. It's not right. Those I'm not forcing my my uh, my nutritional profile. Eat, yeah, yeah. On if you're vegetarian, I respect it. Right. But why are you imposing your choice on me? It is wrong, and not only is it wrong, mm. you are harming the country's future. Hmm. and that's a problem is this not a government agnostic matlab isme koi mere ko i i can see right bjp because it comes from a hindu flank of things and therefore the the vegetarian insistence might be more maybe slightly more maybe a little more than slightly more but i i do not remember a moment in congress or any other state government where they were like you know what meat serve karna chahiye eggs to kar rahe the na congress and eggs is the best in protein hmm. and it's the and it's a super food mm hmm वो भी बंद कर दिया सो बट दैट सिंगुलर एग इशू इज दैट लाइक सी वाई एम आस्किंग दिस इज बिकॉज वी वेंटर्ड पॉलिटिक्स विच इज वॉट वी शॉर्ट टू डिस्कस ऑल्सो हियर एंड इट इट इज नॉट लाइक इट्स इट्स नॉट द वर्ल्ड वर्ल्ड बिगेस्ट डिफरेंस जस्ट हैविंग एग्स इन अ मिड डे मील सिचुएशन एज फार एज न्यूट्रिशनल प्रोफाइल्स फॉर इंडियंस गो अक्रॉस दूड राइट सो वट डू यू थिंक अबाउट दैट लाइक इज दिस नॉट अ गवर्नमेंट एग्नोस्टिक इशू यहाँ मतलब हमारा जो कल्चरल वेजिटेरियनिज्म है इज दैट नॉट टू ब्लेम एज अपोज टू पोलिटिकल पार्टी आई थिंक कल्चरली वी आर मॉर नॉन वेजिटेरियन सेवेंटी सेवेंटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ इंडियंस इट नॉन वेज इज बिंग इम्पोज अपॉन अस एंड दैट कल्चर इज नॉट टेकन ओवर दैट आई एक्सेप्ट आई ऑल्सो थिंक द लैक ऑफ मीट इज बिकॉज ऑफ लैक ऑफ बजट्स अच्छा I feel that. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I do hope that we can have a solution where we can start serving meat to children, hmm. those who want to eat. Hmm. Again, I don't want to offend people who don't want to eat because suddenly they get very aggressive on that. Sure. Those who want to eat, they should be allowed to eat, hmm. whether it is mutton or it is chicken. Hmm. I think that should be allowed. Chicken is great meat. Fish is great meat. It's fabulous. It has omega three. Hmm. I think it should be served. Hmm. I also think it's budget constraints in government schools, hmm. which I can understand. And therefore, eggs is the cheapest and the best option. Hmm. That at least you get some amount of protein, good protein, hmm. and two eggs a day or whatever sort of helps you build. It's better than getting nothing. Hmm. Of course, the ideal situation would be chicken or fish. Right. Of course, that would be. Or ideal. like vegetarian-based protein powders. 
what do you think of them i i'm support them i support i take whey protein hmm. i support uh, protein powder right absolutely but protein is a deficiency right maybe even lab grown meat hmm. maybe hmm. we could work on it maybe that could come out because the plant based meat is quite, horrible is quite horrible it's a it's a it's a disaster it's a blasphemy to just meat yeah. and protein in general that's true i agree yes so at least lab grown meat so hmm. that it doesn't offend religious sentiments right whatever you do hmm. let's come out with alternative maybe insects hmm I know a lot of people will get repulsed by it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but great source of protein. It's the great, and it can solve the protein problem of the world, and also the insect problem of the world, and the insect problem. <laughs> so maybe I don't know. We have got to work. I'm not saying got to eat insects. Right. I mean, I'm okay with any sort of protein, and I've tried that out. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be honest. But I'm not imposing my choice. But I'm saying we must have a solution. These problems of heart attack, this cardiac arrest, this malnutrition, this not growing taller, this as a result of which not having a healthy population hmm. is a result of not having enough protein, and that is a serious problem. We as a nation need to talk about, hmm. which the opposition does not push enough, and the government, when it's pushed enough, makes it a religious issue and therefore skids away from the issue. That is a serious health problem. See, this is what I like about the stuff I've heard from you, right? Like you are almost unabashed in your criticism of. politics across the board yeah. right and and i i had asked you this question um over the phone as well and this seems to be a pervasive almost like mai agar kisi se bolta hu i'm speaking to tehseen they'll be like yaar ye mere ko samajh nahi aata tehseen is an independent analyst i understand that right yeah. but you are also pro congress yeah. both those things are true so you are not officially with congress no. but you are pro congress correct that is the best way to understand correct. you right so why like you seem like a fairly smart guy um i mean probably saying too little i think you're a very smart guy Why are you on the losing side? <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. I knew that was the setup coming. was so beautiful. I love it. And I was waiting for it. There, the punch is gonna come. Why are you on the losing? Side? Boom! 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 <laughs> Tell me why. <laughs> Because, okay. So serious answer. Hmm. Politically correct answer. Hmm. I think the Congress is the soul of India. Hmm. I do believe in the idea of Congress. Hmm. That does not say I believe in the current Congress's idea on everything, hmm. but the general idea of Congress is what is the soul of India. The original Congress was a was not just a nationalist party. It had diverse views. So you could have somebody who is absolutely uh, towards the right like Vallabhbhai Patel, like uh, Malviya ji, hmm. or you come this side, you could have somebody left of the center. Hmm. and there was a centrist party with somebody like nehru in the center balancing both points of view and there's nothing wrong being left of the center economically mm-hmm. we were a poor country that's fine right. but it was a centrist party like a tent that accommodated all points of view hmm. let me say like ma ganga hmm. i'm not comparing the congress to ganga sure where everyone has space right and then within that space you could grow branch out etc the current congress is too left which is my problem with it which i want to get it back into the center hmm but the congress's contribution to india pre independence post independence is phenomenal it is something i associate deeply with hmm. it's a party it's an organization that's contributed so much to india's to the way india shaped to its uh, growth to its economic prosperity i think that it would be a disservice to this great country if the congress were to die and i am on the side because i want the congress to stay alive because i want to fight every single day to keep this organization alive i believe deeply and strongly in this organization its core values mm. but when does a cause become like i understand first of all and i respect the sentiment right like any kind of loyalty to a principle as a man is super respectable but there has to be a point where you're like maybe the cause is being stretched too far maybe the reins of this car or this horse or this chariot have been taken over by other people is that a, is that some modality in your head it is right hmm. no filters it right. is ha huh. it's too left right some of the advices around rahul gandhi are extremely left hmm. it's a problem right they live in a parallel universe they don't understand real india and therein lies a problem let me give you an example as we're recording today Yesterday, the Congress for once did something f- very well. Um, I don't know when this comes out, but for your viewers, the context is yesterday the the government had promised on Saturday we are we are today on Friday mm-hmm. to remove a white paper on the economy to show how well the government's done. That's the current government. Cheek. The Congress outsmarted the government by coming out with a black paper saying how badly it's done, hmm. forcing the government to react and remove the white paper. one day earlier so then officially re- uh, removed but it went across to the media and now the economic comparisons happen mm. and actually the up has done quite well compared to this government economically again i whatever your reasons are rather than that being the debate 
the debate happened on the prime minister's caste yeah now that shouldn't have the attention should have been taken away the debate should have been economy 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 because i firmly believe hmm. if you take on this government on economy jobs uh lack of savings this government will lose hmm. lack of democracy lack of uh, whatever things this government will have a problem it can't defend the minute you go on to the government strong point hmm. the government's going to win so let me get this straight um it you were saying that the upa 1 and 2 have done better economically than the last two sessions the last two sort of um, last 10 years under the bjp is that accurate i am saying they did very well okay and i also say that uh, these last 10 years to an extent have been a missed opportunity india could have done much better huh. on the momentum from upa 1 upa 2 okay. i'm not saying india didn't do well hmm. we are the fifth largest economy in the world who can i credit I have to credit the prime minister right of course he did a good job right but there are opportunities where we failed in right uh some of them being in future in web 3.0 we have no road map mm-hmm. uh fintech ai we have no road map mm. all your fintechs today ai fintechs are being registered in dubai and singapore everyone right. not one is being registered here you now have the startup winter now you can see it's a global problem indians are facing a massive problem as well mm. so you don't have an issue your manufacturing is not up to the mark after covid manufacturing shifted to vietnam it hasn't shifted to india yes yeah the one odd apple factory you may tom tom about that also came 2013 when congress was there let's be honest hmm. uh, uh and i'm not running that down of course there's been assembly of mobiles i'm not running the achievements no nobody is 100% bad right of course this government has done some amount of good right has it done enough no it hasn't hmm. it could have done a lot more and let me tell you one thing your gdp is going to grow on your service industry mm-hmm. correct the mm-hmm. service industry is going to be your future if you want people to get out of agriculture as landless laborers and come into the cities or into their villages what are the youngsters going to do they're going to start spas they're going to start gyms they're going to start restaurants they're going to start bars they're going to start uh you know very service industries mm-hmm. or some something related to it a podcast channel mm-hmm. if you moral police people if your government gets too intrusive if you make laws that means businessmen can go into jail for bona fide mistakes hmm. your service industry will not grow some of your ed laws hmm. are terrible for businessmen if i were to put a gun on your head and say if you make a mistake in this podcast you go in jail hmm. because even copyright is under ed today you will hmm. never grow you'll always be under pressure wow i am already feeling it huh. yeah i'm right. serious yeah. about it mm-hmm. um what is our policy for web 3.0 we have the highest internet shutdown in the world hmm. more than ukraine which is facing a war hmm. how do you have how do you become the web 3.0 desi- uh, destination for the world like we were for web 2.0 if you don't have a policy on that how can whenever government wants shut down internet hmm. so i think these are some of the things that we need to address very very seriously as a country you can't have a government that's so intrusive um uttarakhand f- under that ucc right. which to an extent i support ucc they now said you have to register who you're living in what the hell so yeah. is a is a police guy going to come into my bedroom and check who is with who well i it's and it's compulsory you can say you can say look if you want to be in a living register right it should be voluntary now say okay if you're below 21 we will inform your parents who the hell is the government yeah man now, that part we, i do not like yeah so now think about it say there's a young podcaster hmm. 19 20 21 22 He's going. He wants to. He's chilling in Uttarakhand. He wants to work from Uttarakhand. Hmm. He wants to get into a relationship. Maybe, maybe uh, you know, live a casual life. Right now, he's going to be under police pressure if he's living with his friends. What if you're living in but not in a sexual relationship? Right. What if you're in a polygamous relationship as a guy or a girl, but you don't want to commit, and both couples are open to it? Right. Why is the police entering your bedroom? Well, I think the polygamy issue is a little bit of a straw man because that's very, very rare. But I think I'm the not central... talking about marriage. Yeah, I'm yeah, talking yeah. about open relationship. Even open relationship. Youngsters. Yeah, yeah. They're not married, and perhaps they don't want to get married hmm. because they want to just be with different people. Right. Why should the police get in? I think yeah. Fundamentally, the fact that my sex life is to be policed in any way by the state is just horrible and horrendous, and it's the starting of a very bad situation. that we've seen with islamic countries time and again iran saudi arabia even pakistan pakistan Afghanistan. right now add to this the fact that they're moral policing what you eat right do the governments in your bedroom the governments in your kitchen hmm. what the hell and these are cops hmm. Hmm. and how you, how do you know that these let's say it's a kosher live in relationship right uh for i don't want to offend anybody so hindu guy muslim girl right let's me nobody's it. offended no offended nobody's offended by this okay. right huh no. Now how do you know that and and you're going to inform the parents hmm. why 
And now, how do you know that that data is not going to be, you have no data protection laws, mm-hmm. not going to be leaked to those vigilante groups, Muslim vigilante groups, Hindu vigilante groups to, to attack people. Right. They're going to be at your bedroom. Right. Why would you have something like this that makes you open to threats? What if it's two people from different castes? Hmm. Fair point. And how do you know that this doesn't go to vigilante groups? And almost all things of this nature are prone to fanaticism. Because eventually 100%. the loudest voice is the fanatical voice and people align with the fanatics. People don't understand the slippery slope argument in politics with this kind of stuff is super real. Absolutely. So I'm with you on that. But is your criticism uh, sociocultural in the sense that there's a lack of freedom that's being developed through cultural means and then being pushed into laws? Or is your criticism more economic? Both. Both. Both of it. Which one is more primary? Or which one do you think should Congress both, take up? Both. But mm-hmm. but without cultural freedom, without democratic freedom, you cannot have economic prosperity. It's impossible. The most prosperous nations in the world are democratic nations. Period. Well, China. Very. Well, China's collapsing now. And we know lack of transparency. We now know what's happened with their uh, real estate sector. Mm. We now know their GDP is collapsing. Ultimately, dictatorial countries, lack of democratic countries will always collapse. Only democracies survive in the long run. Well, I don't know who I was talking to, but I think the top, one of the top, two of the top five countries um, economically are Russia and China and neither True. of them are democratic. True. So, but, is, huh. but I agree with that. Mm-hmm. But look at the Chinese economy today. And I am telling you what the Chinese, what Indians admired about the Chinese economy only as long as 10 years ago, the strong arm manship, the strong, the lack of uh, the government will to do what it wants, the lack of public uh, consent needed. Today, with all of that, what is collapsing fastest in China? One, their uh, educom and the IT industry. Hmm. Second, their real estate industry. The two things Indians admired most is completely collapsing. Ultimately, which dictatorial country has survived over a long term? Over that, every democratic country they, of course, they go through the ups and downs. Mm. They recover because everything is transparent in public domain. Without democracy, you cannot have progress. Let me ask uh, people who, who who love uh, who love strong leaders and and dictatorial. How many people will shift permanently to China or Russia, and how many will shift to America? Why do Indians want to make a beeline for America? Mm. Why London? Mm. Why do other countries? Right. Why are they making a beeline for China and Russia? Hmm. Because ultimately, here you want a strong man. Here you want the government to rule, but you want to go to America. The most number of Indians have given up their passports in the last 10 years. Why? The most number of Indians are trying to run away from India to go to which country? The report came out recently. United Amen. States. Yeah. Why? If everything is so good here, why do you want to go there? Hmm. Hmm. How many people do you know of who have given up America's American citizenship and become Indian citizens? You might know one-out case. Yeah. Not in numbers. So hmm. the one-out case is not an exception. Hmm. Because I know when this podcast comes out, I'll have one tweet saying, in on each other. That's one-out. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah, fine. Yeah, right. The exception, I'm not talking exception. The rule is Indians want to go there. Right. If we are the fifth largest economy in the world, which we are, and I'm proud of it, why do we want to go there? Hmm. Because we are not the fifth largest per capita wise. So better growth is there. More freedom is there. Mm. Why are youngsters leaving India today if everything is so good? Mm. Why are they even registering in other countries? And I said this on another podcast and I'm saying this today. More than 70, eh, more, most people who have more than 70, 80 crores in, in, in liquidity mm. are buying a house in Dubai. Come yeah, 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 no, 100%. Come That's Dubai. super true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone from the, Delhi will be there. Why? Yeah, yeah. Why do you want one foot in Dubai? Yeah, Why? Because I thought it's a real estate opportunity. Real estate opportunity, two hours away from India. Right. You get a golden visa. Huh. If something happens here, you can be in Dubai. Mm. It's like the, the best city in India is Dubai. That's the how best I city say. in India is Dubai. Huh. It's it's the best, it's it's a better version of Delhi and Mumbai today. Yes. A cleaner version. Agreed. And you get everything there. Hmm. And even though that is not a democratically free country. That's not a democratically free country, but people have put their option there. Right. They just put one option there hmm. they have, because you can't get a citizenship there. Hmm. But those who can give up their citizenship are going to democratic countries. Hmm. That is the problem. Hmm. See, um, you said a lot of things and um, let me be very clear, right? I've seen a tendency to fall towards authoritarianism in sort of this new political upsurge, this pro-BJP upsurge, and not just pro-BJP, but in general. Jo abhi naya youth, hmm. the, the now 18-year-olds, right? 10 years younger than me. I've seen some of that authoritarian tendency. Sometimes on Twitter, I'll see stuff like, uh, we need censorship on Instagram kind of nonsense. And I'm like, do you know what you're starting? So I want to make it very clear. I'm very pro-democracy and I'm very pro-transparency. I think the, a self-respecting man cannot desire somebody else to rule over them. Correct. Right. However, the idea that democracy is the best form of government is something I've come to intellectually question. And so you said something to the effect of that democratic countries live the longest. 
the longest living democratic country is either france which had an interruption right after its first democratic spell or america which is 1756, 1756. so as 250 270 years there were monarchic countries that lived for way longer true right so like to say that democracy um sort of ensures the longest it's the most self respecting regime right like i feel the best in a very free country and i also feel indians who have this kind of envy towards democracy do not truly understand whether when they are sitting in los angeles doing whatever the fuck they want exactly. and nobody comes to say kyun kar raha hai saale ye exactly it is a completely novel feeling this is what indians get hooked to when they go to america and canada True. right and there are problems in uh, us and canada uh, uncomparable it's not exactly. the same it's not the same right The second thing you said is why don't Indians go to But Russia? Just, just a correction. Yeah. I I didn't say the longest living countries. Mm-hmm. I said the longest economic surviving countries. Fair. And over two hundred years, both America and France, with whatever interruptions they've had economically, have prospered. Hmm. Democratic countries bring more people out of poverty than uh, than dictatorial countries. Sure. Dictatorial countries, even when let's say India, the Mughal rule, which everyone loves to bash, and I I also don't. I'm not a fan of it. Right. Where our GDP was 25 percent of the world, hmm. we had a lot of poverty. Hmm. Dictatorial countries never bring people out of poverty. China has a lot of poverty. Hmm. North Korea has a lot of poverty. Syria has a lot of poverty. Afghanistan has a lot of poverty. Whether they progress or no, hmm. they may progress, hmm. but the poverty remains. Right. Democratic countries bring masses of people out of poverty, hmm. and that is true in 200 years of America and France, England, and other democratic countries. If I were to do a quick statistical, heuristical, like, jaldi jaldi ek analysis karu, ma'am, I think the number of people brought out of poverty in the first 30 years which is 47 to 77 let's say before murarji desai um, came into power which is all congress and then if i did the last 10 years i think the math would dictate that more people were brought out of poverty in the last 10 years than the first 30 last 20 years last 20 years manmohan singh got more people out of poverty than uh, prime minister modi hmm. prime minister modi says 24 crore people but that's because the economic reforms took place So of course it's not just democracy. Hmm. You can't be a closed economy. You have to be a global economy. Sure. So that is the criteria. Both America and France are global economies. Hmm. Of course you have to be a global economy. You have to export. If you yeah. export, you have to allow people in, you have to allow talent in all of that. You have to be an open country. Hmm. That happened after 91. Hmm. So then if you break it down, more people came out of poverty post 91 than pre 91. Hmm. Sure. And post 91 most of it was Congress. Right. Perhaps even the Gandhi. That's not the issue that we're talking about. That I agree with. Hmm. So we're talking about democracy, but economic model. You have to be an open country. In fact, India should be more open right now to get more people faster out of poverty. Hmm. This 24 crores that Prime Minister Modi's government says it got out of poverty is also disputable. Hmm. But I give them credit. Chobis crore, not to 18 crore, 17 crore. ठीक है. I am not going to sit here on your podcast and say the Prime Minister did nothing. Hmm. Of course, people are. coming out of poverty hmm. of course there is some amount of growth hmm. Hmm. how else can you be the fifth largest you've gone from 11 to 5 right 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 so there is growth yes that growth will trickle down hmm. Hmm. so if you have a podcast studio you will give a job to three people right i agree right so there but i'm seeing the pace has slowed down the pace hmm. was better at manmohan singh's time okay and this government always says we had covid hmm. that government had the lehman brother crisis right 2008 financial crisis massive crisis and pri- and president obama said of prime minister manmohan singh that he held his hand and he got the world out of the crisis hmm. that's when the double taxation agreements happened that's when we identified tax havens that's when we started going after that that's when we started making um, reforms but the congress also made mistakes hmm. uh, pranab mukherjee the retrospective tax Terrible thing. Stupid idea. Terrible. So stupid. And after the Supreme Court struck it down, you get a retrospective tax. Yeah. It hurt the Congress. For the for the viewers, tell me a little bit more about this uh, retrospective thing because I'm not sure if everybody has this clear. Okay, so for your viewers to understand, Vodafone, of course, is a global company, as you all know, a global telecom company, and they sold some assets in India and they acquired Hutchin Mauritius. As a result of acquiring Hutchin Mauritius, where the company was primarily based, they acquired Hutchin India. Now the government, which is then the Congress government, Pranab Mukherjee said, "Look, you've acquired Hutch India. There's a certain amount of tax that you need to pay on this." Their argument was, "They've acquired this in Mauritius. They pay the taxes in Mauritius. Taxes don't apply in India. You pay tax at one place." Right. And Mauritius is zero tax or something like that in this oh, case. Oh, less yeah, tax. Yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah, sure, yeah, but right. it, I think zero tax, less tax. But yeah, it was a tax haven. Right, Basically, right, it was a tax haven. Right, right. So they got away by paying lesser tax. Hmm. Now that was a loophole system. Could be a loop. Arguably a loop. The government of India's argument was: Look, the operations actually you've acquired Hutch Mauritius to acquire Hutch India because you want to expand your operations in India. And India was a growing telecom market. It was a valid argument, except that the laws did not allow it. Hmm. So the matter went to various tribunals. From there, it went to the High Court and Supreme Court, and Supreme Court ruled in favor of Vodafone that they don't have to pay. Maybe you bring in another law 
in future you got to pay right. but as of now they don't owe your tax liability right the government that's pranab mukherjee not only brought in a law he bought in a law retrospectively to charge them 13000 crore rupees right that completely shook investor confidence in india right both domestic as well as international right laws cannot be tinkered that way you cannot bring in a law to go after one person and that too in the past in the past if it's unheard of yes that's bad jurisprudence it is completely and for me as a congress voter i thought here and i'm a huge fan of dr manmohan singh hmm. i think this country owes a debt to dr manmohan singh i thought he should have stood up and told pranab mukherjee no is no pranab mukherjee as finance minister was a disaster hmm chidambaram was good hmm Pranab Mukherjee was a disaster as a finance minister. Hmm. And no Congress supporter will tell you this. They are very scared. They are. And they will. They nobody takes on Pranab Mukherjee. Okay. I know that he's got the Bharat Ratna. I know this government's given him. I know the BJP loves him because they just love him. I don't know. Maybe because he got in the retrospective <laughs> tax. <laughs> but <laughs> but <laughs> BJP because he's such a power. straw man. Probably. And as president, he never really took on Modi. You know, whatever ji, Modi ji ne bheja, wo sab sign karte gaye. Hmm. So okay. And and I think he was statesman like. I do think everyone has good qualities and bad qualities. Again, I'm not against it. I'm sure he had some good qualities. Hmm. But some of the mistakes Pranab Mukherjee did really cost you pay too. Really retrospective tax. The second thing, when the Anna Andolan was on, hmm. I know Anna, right? He's from Pune. He's from a village near Pune. I know this guy, and I'm going to be as unfiltered, complete sham of a protest. Hmm. Anna Hazare, I've known him for all my life. All he did, I don't know how he was made into this big, uh, huge figure Media of figure. anti mm-hmm. corruption figure. The guy, uh, but anyways, and all the BJP and Aam Aadmi Party today. Come come, hmm. leo leo coffee leo. Rakh do yahan pe rakh do. I love you. Got a red cup. No branding. <laughs> ये हमारी चाल नहीं है भाई देखो ये हमारी चाल नहीं है ये किसकी कॉफी है अच्छा ठीक है अच्छा ठीक है दिस इज हिज ब्लैक कॉफी नो हां ठीक है ठीक है डन परफेक्ट ओके गुड हां भाई आज हम लोग खेल गए 420 आईक्यू दिस इज अमेजिंग 5D चेस यू नो रेगुलर 5D चेस इन दिस ऑफिस सो यू आर सेइंग या सो आफ्टर दैट अलोंग विद अन्ना हजारी जी रामदेव जी आल्सो वेंट ऑन अ फास्ट फॉर अगेंस्ट ब्लैक मनी ब्रिंग बैक द ब्लैक या I'm nothing against Ramdev Ji. TK has the right to fast. Pranab Mukherjee, when he went to receive Ramdev Ji at the airport, went with four cabinet ministers. Ramdev Ji was given more protocol than President Obama. My limited point is, I have, I'm all for democracy. I think people should protest. As bad or wrong a protest is, you have a right to protest. <laughs> Hitting Ramdev Ji's people was wrong. Period. But taking this kind of protocol, that more protocol than President Obama, I think it cost the Congress. These are mistakes Pranab Mukherjee made. <laughs> it's not right hmm um when the farmers protest happened of course the prime minister reached out to the farmers there these meetings but four cabinet ministers didn't go to the airport to receive the farmers there the meeting in a ministry hmm and that's the way it should be if you start if government starts changing based on people then that's not governance it's a very weak government it's a very weak government and even the, this government does that hmm. based on one incident they will change something but what i'm trying to say is government governance should be consistent hmm. it should not be people centric and therefore vodafone was a tax button for a company centric it completely destroyed confidence if a government can change laws to go after one company it'll change laws to go after a second company hmm. and investor confidence will go and i think that was a terrible thing pranab mukherjee did in in my view um and i always saw it as that even though so 2008 i'm in 8th grade which is all of 12 right. and then 2011 when the ombudsman this um, what is the hindi word for that lokpal 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 when this lokpal thing starts happening i'm in 11th grade which is only 15 so i'm a young boy around that time and my view was that you know uh, i don't know if you remember rangde basanti as a yeah. movie the whole movie's premise seemed to be this sort of protest against ongoing करप्शन बेस्ड इशूज दैट एग्जिस्टेड इन द टाइम कि उसका बाप ही उसके दोस्त को मरवा देता है उसका बाप ही इतना बड़ा चोर है वो डिफेंस गवर्नमेंट में अनुपम खेर प्लेज दैट रोल आई थिंक सिद्धार्थ राइट फादर सोहाली खान फ्योन से सो सोहाली खान फ्योन से इज माधवन हु डाइज इन द प्लेन क्रैश एंड सो माधवन वेरी गुड फ्रेंड इज सिद्धार्थ हुज द साउथ इंडियन एक्टर हुज फादर इज अनुपम खेर आई नो सिद्धार्थ राइट राइट यू नो सिद्धार्थ राइट एंड सो ऑल ऑफ दिस हैपन्स इन एंड आई रिमेंबर दिस देर इज दिस सिटिंग आउटसाइड द इंडिया गेट सीन वेर you know eventually the police comes and starts beating these people up and it was very representative of that time like this is i think rangdeep basanti is what year 2008 i know ha right like around this time and so corruption was a very big issue 2006 yeah. okay corruption was a huge massive issue i remember and with 2011 lokpal anna hazare arvind kejriwal all of that happening 
I thought that brought down the Congress regime massively. Completely. Is that true? Completely. Mm-hmm. The Congress didn't know how to react to it. मुझे ये बोल देते मैं अन्ना हजारे से जी भाई एंटी एजिंग करवा देते अन्ना हजारे को फास्टिंग में एंटी एजिंग कंप्लीटली बाय द वे आई हैव टू टेल यू व्यूअर्स दिस अन्ना हजारे चैप अन्ना हजारे जी इन माय विलेज ही इन हिज विलेज नॉट ओनली एनफोर्स प्रोहिबिशन बिकॉज़ महाराष्ट्र इज नॉट अ ड्राई स्टेट ही एनफोर्स्ड इट पीपल हु वुड ड्रिंक वर टाइड टू अ पोल एंड बीटन अप वेरी गांधीयन Yeah, very Gandhi. Very Gandhi. And he was called a second. And I'm not making this up. Uh, and I'll Just send you. I'll send you. No, no, it won't fall. And I'll send you the images of the journalists. The um, and I and I'll tell you the Congress completely misread Anna Hazari Ji. One day I was passing by the Prime Minister's house, then Prime Minister Manmohan Singh Ji's house. I think this is 2011. This is prior to when the protest started. Prior to the World Cup, India won. Hmm. India won in March. I'm talking about Jan or Feb. I remember it was winter. and while i was passing by i saw these journalists opposite the prime minister's house waiting for the thing. so i stopped and most of the journalists were friends and i said why what's happened today cold winter night you waiting here they said oh somebody from pune is meeting the prime minister i said who they said anna hazare uh, he is the gandhian of india and i was like anna hazare <laughs> i was like okay i'm like why is the prime minister meeting anna hazare like we we knew mm-hmm. anna hazare ji was not an intellectual The Figure. most uh, Gandhi, you can agree disagree. Uh, Gandhi had a point of view. Hmm. Uh, Anna Hazari ji didn't have too much of a point of view. He was very, um, very uh, walk in the middle of the road. No, no, not in. Uh-huh. in that's fine. Hmm. He's just very. Um, what can I say? Um, you just say things that he would be told to say or accept. He believed, and he would then just go on this fast, and he would think it's his way or the highway. Hmm. And really, nothing of his fast had been very successful in in Maharashtra until he came to Delhi. Those around Anna Hazari ji, whether it was Arvind K. Jriwal ji, Manish Sisodia ji, Kumar Vishwas ji, uh, the others who now joined the BJP, so some went up, some went to BJP, Anupam Kher ji, etc., who are pro BJP. The Lokpal, that's the basis of it, was so draconian. If that Lokpal would have come in, we would no longer be a democracy. That Lokpal mandated even Supreme Court judges come under the Lokpal, even the Prime Minister. Hmm. And so the Lokpal would have supreme authority without being elected. Hmm. Can you imagine how draconian that was? That's very counterintuitive as a thought. Just and don't believe me. Huh. I'm asking your viewers. Google what that lo- original Lokpal draft was. That's the one. They were not ready to negotiate. Huh. And so this came from a very moralistic place in Anna Hazare that people should not drink. Whip people up who drank. It's crazy. So it's this this idea that my morality is supreme, hai, or that should be enforced. Absolutely, and this thing that everybody else is a chore, including Advani ji, including the everyone is a chore. Everyone is this. Look, I'm not saying that we don't have a problem in Indian politics. Even today, we do. Even mm. with the Congress, even with the BJP, we have a massive problem. You, you think there's still a corruption problem? Oh, you think BJP is not corrupt? But it's oh, not. BJP is massively corrupt. <laughs> massively. Let's get to it. Tell BJP me about it. BJP is massively <laughs> corrupt. वो सब ED ninety five percent ही आ जाती है. Okay, so for so, viewers, so, huh. Chakki pissing Ajit Pawar ji huh. and Chagan Bujbal ji, who Devendra Fadnavis ji was going to Chakki piss out, right. and now is with the BJP because right. they're in an alliance. Huh. Chagan Bujbal's ED case is closed. Guess why? Why? ED lost the file. Now if Chagan Bujbal ji comes back on our side, which is the side I want to, huh. the file will be found. <laughs> 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 BJP just so. Doesn't even pretend to solve the problem. It just right. brazens it out. Huh. Congress, I think, uh, got scared of the media pressure. This is my analysis, hmm. and they just started reacting and taking everybody's re- uh, uh, resignations. BJP gives nobody's re- resignation. Hmm. Did uh, Bridge Bhushan Sharan Singh resign after what he did with the wrestlers? Hmm, 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 hmm. Bridge BJP is absolute no resignation. Hmm. They think you'll fight, fight, fight. Ultimately, you'll get tired and you'll go away. Hmm. The Congress caved in. One of the resignations which I completely opposed in the Congress was Ashwini Kumar ji, the then Law Minister. Hmm. There was a file that had to go to the CBI, uh, to the Supreme Court on the CBI. He's Law Minister of the country. His goddamn department is going to represent the CBI in the Supreme Court. As Law Minister, he saw it. Hmm. On that, he resigned. Hmm. He resigned on because he saw a file as a Law Minister that the Law Ministry was going to represent in the Supreme Court. And so, uh, how's that? Ba- like, I'm probably not sophisticated enough to follow. L- you're, you're studying law, right? What are you going to do as a lawyer? You're going to read your brief, right? If you have a law minister, you will give him the brief. 
the law ministry will file the file for the government right will file the case uh-huh. so if you were tomorrow say say tomorrow hypothetically i'm prime minister uh-huh. you're a you're the prosecutor you're the ag in my government mm-hmm. and there's a law minister mm-hmm. and you're representing me mm-hmm. won't you go to my law minister and tell what you're going to say won't yeah, you yeah, yeah, right, right. isn't that the basics of democracy uh-huh, uh-huh. and the file went to the law minister ha uh-huh. and he was explained what the cbi stand is going to be right because the supreme court wanted to know the government stand on cbi mm-hmm. isn't this as simple as it and so what could have ashwini kumar done he, nothing he just saw the file and he and got scared no then? he accepted it and he told yeah i saw the file Achha. bjp said are you seeing a file instead of supreme court seeing it hmm. they made an issue and he resigned congress hmm. took his resignation so so this this just means like for something the, that was right so there has to be a moral loss to that extent within the congress around that time then congress was very scared of what the media did they didn't know how to deal with the media hmm. they uh caved in to the media pressure that time they also even then and even now didn't have good communication on trying to say that these aren't scams on the opposite end do you think because why is the bjp not caving into media pressure because the bjp is absolutely authoritarian hmm. most um, they they uh, know that the media now cannot build a pressure because once they withstood the first wave of pressure and the media caved in uh it's become that uh, now media can do nothing the bjp runs the the most of the mainstream media the way it wants most of your prime time 90% of the shows that i do 95 are questioning the opposition and that's the reality of the times you can every single day hmm. these are the debates every single day where the opposition is being questioned now i'm not saying opposition should not be questioned i'm saying in the last 10 years 95% of the shows that i've done has been questioning the opposition and i'm defending shouldn't the questions be to the government even if the opposition is wrong hmm. that's basic democracy 101 hmm. so the bjp now today has complete wise like grip on media which is why they get a little scared of digital media and podcasters etc and they don't want to be on that side because there is difficult to control hmm. therefore i won't be surprised if regulations come in even there and they're trying to bring in regulations for us for podcasters for, for everything they got in this digital bill kunal huh. kamra went to bombay high court okay. got stay where they said the government will fact check mm-hmm. and the government fact checks and your story is wrong you have to remove it i so, have to remove it so like if they find something that is questionable in this conversation yeah yeah so now let's let's think of a simple digital journalist he goes to a village in uttar pradesh or maharashtra hmm. why why put uttar pradesh bad everywhere hmm. maharashtra hmm. or karnataka congress hmm. government he says look the mid day meal is not good these are not good quality rotis kids are not being given rotis they were promised four rotis they've been given two i'm just giving a hypothetical uh-huh. simplistic sarkar ne kaha nahi 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 chari diya tum galat ho aapko story nikalni hogi that's a very dangerous place to be bombay i could stay it kunal kamra went to court and uh-huh. had he not gone uh, with kapil sibal i was going in supreme court on this hmm. so kapil sibal said we'll go on this is very dangerous hmm. but bombay i could stay it hmm. today want to through the back door bring in these regulations hmm. yeah, Ab- and is- now we've done this podcast na right. they will tweet us sir huh? No, okay. no, 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 Mr. Punawala is wrong. <laughs> They're going to tweet us. <laughs> They're going to call me, remove this podcast. Okay, so true story. Huh. You know, in my um, check, can this, I take, check this? No, this Kunal Kamra wala, please. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Huh. Can I can I take another podcast name? Yeah, yeah. I so, Bia Biceps, I did a podcast. Mm-hmm. Okay, so here the, the the we love him by the way. Here, I I, I love him. Yeah, and love bro vibe, just like you, hmm. fit young, good looking guy. Hmm. Just like us, <laughs> <laughs> just like us, twenty eight year old, twenty eight years old. <laughs> he's also twenty eight. Yeah, he's roughly. We the all same. we all twenty eight. We all number one. We don't age past twenty eight. Yeah, we are twenty eight. We just twenty yes, eight. Right. Period. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm making a very serious point with uh, Ranveer, huh. and I'm and I'm like, um, listen, um, the ISRO. Uh, we send the 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 rocket to the southern part of the moon. Hmm. The the spacecraft, great, and that's fabulous. But ISRO, some of the people who worked on this ISRO project. scientists did not get paid hmm. fact was some of the engineers who worked for a psu did not get paid but hmm. it was the isro project hmm. this is factually acknowledged the government started trolling me you no know, all scientists got paid are baba the point is not scientists point is somebody didn't somebody did not get paid ha huh? so they went after me saying no 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 you are factually wrong all the scientists got paid yeah but the engineers who worked on the psu did not get paid right uh, psu is not government's responsibility excuse me at a psu is run by government right tax payers money right. so they when this comes out they will come out and say no 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 we didn't intend to do this mr punawala is making this up yeah. i know twitter can be the kind of place jahan pe uh, arguments in spirit are just thrown to the gutter and arguments in word like the literal sort of sense yeah. is always taken and then usko chheelte rehte hain log and that is kind of unhelpful but i had no idea that this is how far this goes yeah yeah so they tweeted and all hmm. government 
uh, tweeted PIB tweeted saying that I have misled. The point was not that scientists didn't get paid and mm. engineers. The point was somebody didn't get paid. And if you take credit for Chandrayaan two, which we should, right. which is phenomenal, which credit to the prime minister. Mm. I'm saying it. Then those who didn't get paid or were late paid or went on a strike for two months should also be the government's responsibility. And I'm not blaming the prime minister personally for that. Hmm. Obviously, the prime minister doesn't know somebody's got paid. Hmm. Let's be practical, hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. But if the government gets credit and right. so the prime minister, government should also take responsibility for a PSU. Fair. You can't be trolling me. Government hmm. can't be trolling because the balance of power is in favor of the government. Hmm. Right. Right. It's too strong a force. ंगशन to disclaim ourselves before say listen we have nothing against this 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 i have to say that the government has done some stuff that is good then you can move on to saying i criticize the government on these ends it has become this sort of necessity almost in popular discourse ki pehle ek bar apne aap ko you know you place yourself and say is iske sath main agree karta hu now i will talk about my disagreements yes right so let's just get that out of the way Correct. tell me what have you liked over the last 10 years tell me individually what have you liked from jay shankar ha huh? 370 quality. you you love it. love it love it i was a first First, I was on uh, Google करो माना गुप्ता show news twenty hmm. four hmm. or news so hmm. you can put the visual hmm. माना गुप्ता show when I heard the night before that three seventy is going और hmm. उसी और this was early morning eight thirty nine और वही चला था कैसे हटाएगी three seventy ये वो and I was like if they are removing three seventy I love it hmm. remove it so don't you see that as a failure of the Congress government to never have managed to do that Congress said um, Withered it down. Huh. It was a matter of time when it went. I see it as a failure of UPA one two to not completely finish it. Right. Uh, but I also think I also understand they couldn't do it because they were in alliance with at one point with uh, Farooq Abdullah Ji's party mm -hmm. and uh, not really with Mehbooba Mufti's party. That was more the BJP. Mm -hmm. But they were in alliance, so it was difficult to do it. Which even BJP didn't do when they were in alliance with Mehbooba Mufti Ji's party when her father was alive. Mm -hmm. But see, this is the exact thing I think that uh, the Congress is being. like truly gone after for is is placing some degree of personal political interest over the country's interest bjp also did it they removed it after uh, they broke the alliance now while in the alliance they put it on the back burner hmm. modi ji and mufti saab put it on the back burner hmm. prime minister modi and mufti saab when when is this what year are we talking uh, about uh, just check what they did um, mufti saab and modi ji become uh, mufti saab became chief minister of gujarat they uh, of kashmir, kashmir while modi ji was prime minister modi ji attended the swearing of the flag of kashmir just you will find those visuals you'll find Achha. that i think it was 20 um, 15 16 15 16 Check. i think it was 15 16 this is going to be a hard google for you yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, mufti saab modi ji images mufti swearing in chief minister google that yeah 17 hoga jo bhi hoga but ha so even modi ji put on the back burner hmm. what i don't agree with is the after removing it that lockdown Hmm. Taking away fundamental rights, I went to court against that. I won. Hmm. But so, how do you control the sort of upswell that you are expecting in that region right after? No upswell, nahi tha. people in Kashmiris are as much Indians as anybody else. That's what we like to believe. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. But this, this one. And look, Kashmir's agenda. ये जो नीचे रेड वाला है. लाल और कश्मीर का झंडा है. कश्मीर के झंडे के सामने एकदम हक शक हो रहा है. Oof. This is a controversial एक photograph. देश, एक देश, एक निशान मोदी जी हक कर रहे वो मुफ्ती साहब वजीर आला बन रहे उफ ये बहुत कॉन्ट्रोवर्शियल फोटोग्राफ हो गई भाई बता रहा हूँ आपको हाँ हम बता रहा हूँ हमारा ये पॉडकास्ट में बहुत गवर्नमेंट के पीस आने वाले कहा कहा से हमने निकाला है इसके बाद मेरे को तीन बीजेपी पॉडकास्ट करने पड़ेंगे लाइन से <laughs> अपने पाप तो लेकिन अभिजीत कैन यू शो अप अगेन आई लव अभिजीत आई एम सो कूल मैन शी हां शी शी राइट ऑफ कोर्स शी 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 इज सो कूल सिस्टर अभिजीत ओके लाइट अ नोट अभिजीत एंड आई वंस वेंट ऑन अ डेट अ डेट मतलब ना प्लीज लाइक खाना खाने हां हां वो बुरका पहन कर आ गया यो आई एक्सपेक्ट दैट वो पता नहीं कौन से एक समोसा कॉकस में फिरन विरन पहन के आया था वो हां आई सो दैट बट अच्छा ये बुरका वाले में तब आया जब वो हिजाब वाला इशू हो रहा था और मैं टीवी पे बोल रहा हूं हिजाब पहना जिसका राइट है लड़की हिजाब पहने बिक्री पे आपको क्या करना है अभी जी इसका मेरा बुरका एंड आई एम लाइक बैन बुरका निकाल एंड ही इज लाइक व्हाई यू टू सपोर्ट इट 
he has to make a point. He has to make a point. Man, I love that guy. Honestly, he's so cool. Ha. Huh? She is so cool. My bad. Yeah. So, right. so um kya baat kar rahe the hum? You said 370 years. Yeah, so they also put on the back burner hmm. by the way. Okay. What I did not like the BJP doing was was putting an entire population in a lockdown, first hmm. lockdown after removing 370. I thought that could have been better negotiated. You made the constitutional change. You made it. That's fine. They should have trusted the Kashmir police and the Indian Army, which was already there, and they increased the presence, and allowed people their democratic rights. Even if you put in a curfew or say you know restricted hours, shutting off the internet and telephone for the longest time was completely wrong. It's unacceptable. In no democracy in the world can that happen for an indefinite indefinite time. Hmm. Supreme Court then ruled in my favor. They said it's wrong. They said we want to control rumors, but look, today your life works on the internet. Your insurance, your your money, business, everything. Your everything. Yeah, you can't be digital India and shut down internet for months hmm. just because Pakistan will do something. Hmm. If you're so scared of Pakistan, then deal with Pakistan. People hmm. can't suffer because you're scared of Pakistan. Hmm. Hmm. And you should trust our forces. Hmm. Okay, I I don't agree with that. Hmm. I still see that I, as a marginal complaint. I like three seventy. Hmm. I like that. It is. It is. Imagine in Delhi. Imagine right now here at Faridabad. Your internet shut for months. Not for a day, for hmm. months. Hmm. आपका दो घंटा आप इंटरनेट नहीं देखोगे आपको प्रॉब्लम होता है फॉर मंथ्स इट्स शट इट्स नॉट राइट पीपल कैन गेट आउट ऑफ द हाउस राइट इट्स नॉट राइट इफ वी आर द वर्ल्ड्स लार्जेस्ट डेमोक्रेसी व्हिच वी आर एंड व्हाट माय आर्गुमेंट इन कोर्ट वाज मीनाक्षी अरोरा आर्ग्यूड फॉर मी इट्स अ ब्रिलियंट आर्ग्यूमेंट शी सेड इफ वी आर द लार्जेस्ट डेमोक्रेसी इन द वर्ल्ड एंड द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ इंडिया नाउ अप्लाइज इन जम्मू एंड कश्मीर बिकॉज द कश्मीर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन वॉज रिमूव After 370 was dissolved, then the Article 21, Article 14, Article 19 applies fully. Hmm. That cannot ever be suspended. Fourteen, nineteen, and twenty-one being freedom, right to life and liberty. Twenty-one, yeah. Nineteen, freedom of speech. Right. Fourteen, uh, equality before law. Yeah, right. Yes. None of these can be suspended. Hmm. Come what may, hmm. Modi ji ko 543 me se 544 bhi mil gaya. Hmm. Rahul ji ko 543 me se 600 bhi mil gaya. To suspend nahi kar sakte. Hmm. How did you do it in Kashmir? Hmm. Now Indian Constitution applies. Right. So right, I right, found it right. very Supreme. problematic. Yes, I also found some of the judgments very problematic. Like for example, I remember, along with my petition was uh, one was Omar Abdullah's petition, one was Sitaram Yachuri Ji's petition for one of the uh, Kashmir MLAs who was under house arrest. He hmm. said, "I want to go meet him." Supreme Court said, "You can go, but you can't do politics." You know, politician, no politics. Karega, who's the court to decide? Court should decide. Politi- court should decide based on law. Whether there is legally permissible yeah. or not, right? If 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 government is saying Kashmir is normal, why are you stopping Sitaram Yachuri from going? I hate the left. Hmm. By the way, hmm. I think left are loonies. Hmm. But I'm talking a matter of principle. Right. Yeah. If it's normal, then it will happen. And if it's normal, then tell the court that it's not normal. Hmm. This is which judgment will be made. You don't do politics. Don't do politics. If you don't do it, then what will happen? I tell you, take the mic. Don't do the mic. Don't do the mic. Don't do the mic. Don't do the mic. Then what do? It doesn't work like that. Right, 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 right. Some of this I find problematic even in courts. Even on the farm laws, which hmm. I completely opposed. Hmm. The government got in. Right. We'll come to that why I opposed it. Hmm. But some of those issues, the Supreme Court judgment on that, they suspended the farm laws. Now, for a court to suspend something that's passed by Parliament, either the laws are either you're pregnant or you're not pregnant. Right. Either the laws are there or not there. Under what authority are laws being suspended? By the Supreme Court, yeah. By anyone, mm-hmm. even mm-hmm. by the government. Mm-hmm. Either you say these laws are ultra wise of the Constitution, we'll strike them down. Mm-hmm. Fair. Mm-hmm. You say, boss, these laws are correct. People don't like them. Please go on the street and protest. Fair. 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 How do you suspend the laws? You can't under what jurisdiction under what power? Hmm. This is not how it works, right? Hmm, hmm, hmm. This is very dangerous. These are sliding down democratic indexes. Or आज ये यहाँ हो रहा है. Why do you think tomorrow, whoever the prime minister is, the court won't summon a prime minister like in Pakistan? वो नवाज शरीफ को समन किया था ना? Sure. Why? If you, it cannot be this way. Everything has to operate within a confined space. Parliament should operate within a confined space. Courts should operate within a confined space bureaucracy should have operate within a confined space in india parliament is not supreme courts are not supreme the constitution is supreme right everyone derives their power from the constitution fair equally they derive their power from the constitution fair and the first three words of our constitution are we the people right. hum bharat ke log right. we are supreme right no prime minister no president no chief justice no leader of opposition mm-hmm. is supreme right. we are supreme right so when constitution is supreme you cannot keep crossing that line whether it be the parliament whether it be the government whether it be the supreme court whether it be other courts whether it be the bureaucracy hmm. they have to operate within that space that is true democracy fair so if the farmers went on a protest 
the supreme court so motor took up the farm laws mm-hmm. okay or whatever somebody went because they look these laws are ultraviolet suspended or they're good please uh, sorry cancel it or they're good please uh, uh, continue your protest laws are fitting within the constitution how can you suspend laws until the government you don't operate the laws it's passed by parliament right the supreme court i don't see how there is an authority i don't know what the angle supreme court took to that but it just it doesn't make prime what, sense whatever it took the angle right maybe to bring about peace right maybe right maybe to bring about a settlement it's not a court's job to bring about a political settlement it's a politician's job hmm. and this is problematic i don't like sitaram yachuri ji mm-hmm. as a his ideology right. not as a person as an ideology i don't like the left but he's a politician he got them got go there into politics Mm. How can you stop somebody from doing politics? Then you're no longer a democracy. Mm. So there is a there is a lack of placing the principle as supreme, and then you are making small exceptions that For kind people. of fuck, right. Then why should Sita Ram Yachuri ji get an exception from court to go, and not somebody else from Delhi who wants to go? Laws and rules cannot be based on people. It has to be based on the situation. principle, right? Principle. Yeah. Period. Yeah. yeah. That should be f- foremost. Hmm. That cannot change. Then whatever within that principle, even the prime minister falls, even the chief justice falls, even the leader of opposition falls, hmm. even you and I fall. Right. Principle must be supreme. But this politics of convenience, this idea that uh, a specific situation, a specific admi ke piche, whether the government machinery goes after them or whether the laws or the supreme court alters their behavior depending on them, is not a BJP phenomena either. It's a historical Indian phenomena. This is modern India's total problem as True. far as I understand, right? True. So this, this is not like only in the last 10 years this has existed. This has existed forever. True. But I think in the last 10 years, the degree has gone worse. Achha. I don't know in the last two years a single, I can't think of, and maybe I'm wrong, hmm. a single case the, the union government's lost in the Supreme Court. And you think that is because the union government has some influence in the Supreme Court? I don't think they have influence. I hmm. would never say that. Hmm. I just think it's just the way it has become. I think courts must upheld liberty utmost. Even, for example, forget political cases. Let's leave political aside. Hmm. Let's talk about cases that affect you and me, ED. Hmm. Hmm. At one end, the Supreme Court says that ED is not a police department. Hmm. Therefore, confession before ED is acceptable. Hmm. Because confession before police, police is, not, is not, acceptable. not acceptable as evidence. Huh? But if they are not police, how are they arresting you and how are they taking you in jail? Under what? Then that becomes, then what are they? So it's very, very problematic. Who are they then? Hmm. Number two. Uh, so one bench of the Supreme Court says, if ED arrests you, they need to give you in writing why they've arrested you, which is correct. Sure. The other bench says, no, 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 they can tell you orally over 24 hours. I know of a case where ED, I'm not even talking politics here, for businessmen. ED called them in one case, summoned them in one case. The guy went and got anticipatory bill somehow from Delhi. Some bitchari ne anticipatory bill liya. Ek to ED me milta nahi hai mm-hmm. because of the twin provisions that you're guilty until you prove yourself innocent, which Supreme Court upheld, which is very problematic. Mm-hmm. Which Today is very, did, uh, which is very undemocratic generally compl- speaking. Today they did it in UAPA also. Mm-hmm. They said mm-hmm. you are guilty till you prove yourself innocent. Bail right. not uh, jail or bail is the rule. Right. Okay. So K bitchari ko anticipatory mil gaya. Mm-hmm. ED calls him, keeps him there. At in the evening. It's a Friday evening. Arrest him in a completely different case because he is anticipatory in this case. So in that, case one, uh, they so came that, second case. Right. Well, this I do is, think this is not. Uh, and then, and by the time he got bail again, uh, it became six months. I don't know brief for the guy. The guy maybe has come back. Right. I don't even know the guy. I am mm-hmm. just saying the principle is important, not the players. But I don't see that getting better with the Congress. Right, like this is my thing, ha. Huh. Because see, I, I completely understand, and in fact, I'll tell you what: everybody who's listening, who's a BJP supporter, who votes BJP, all of them understand this. At this point, India and India's population, thanks to the internet, education, and such, is under no such illusion that you know BJP is dud ka dhula hua in any way, and they don't. They have come to enjoy, almost accept and enjoy the realism, the pragmatism of Indian politics, and now they feel like it's their side who is finally getting to exercise these legitimate, illegitimate, semi-legitimate, loopholey powers that exist with the government. Now they feel like the elite class is on the opposing end; that they are being pilloried right now, and they have come to sort of find this sense of joy in it where Correct. joy may not be the, the the best word but they've come to find relief in it where Correct. we were the victims of this for the longest time True. now the people who were punishing us are and i feel like that's the sentiment behind i'll tell you one thing chaate shorate izzate ulfate chaate shorate izzate ulfate sab kuch is duniya mein rehta nahi aaj bhajpa hai jahan kal koi aur tha aaj bhajpa hai jahan kal koi aur tha ye bhi ek daur hai wo bhi ek daur tha ye daur badlega tomorrow if congress comes is it acceptable they do this no 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 it is universally so, unacceptable therefore we need to come together on a principle 
अब बहुत हो गया दस साल आपको मिले hmm. आपने किया लोगों को परेशान एंड इट नाउ बिकॉज वेदर यूर अ बीजेपी सपोर्टर और अ कांग्रेस सपोर्टर द पार शुड बी विथ अस वाई शुड द पार बी विथ मिस्टर मोदी और मिस्टर राहुल गांधी ऑन अ मैटर ऑफ प्रिंसिपल फेयर वी शुड एट द पार दे शुड कम टू अस ऑन दैट सेम इशू सॉरी तहसीन राइट ऑन दैट सेम इशू let's say mr modi and mr gandhi are individuals the people's issue is why should it be with the gandhi family which is a whole dynasty of let sorts. me come to that yes, yes, but yes. let me first talk on this yeah, yeah. I, and i'm going to take that question head on i mm-hmm. won't run away mm-hmm. whether it's mr modi or anyone mr kharge mm-hmm. whoever mm-hmm. amit shah ji and whoever mm-hmm. after if rahul ji doesn't be whoever right. the point is the power should be with us that and I agree therefore with. Mm-hmm. we must now reach and force both our political parties or the two big factions to say that we'll be democratic right Now, I often say this. At least BJP me, thodi bhot international media ye hai to there's little bit of fear and Modi ji as an international. Imagine when if if Mamta ji was prime minister or Arvind Kejriwal ji. Well, look at what they did in Punjab with that uh, Congress leader Khaira. Hmm. I have no idea. So huh. Khaira was a Congress leader, was leader of opposition of Aam Aadmi Party. Acha. Or usko 2008 ya 2009 ya kisi ke case, ah, thara ke case me jisme usko court ne acquit kiya tha, usme utha diya. And then an alliance. Is Arvind Kejriwal doing it? Yeah, yeah. I'm Army Party. Oh, uh-huh. Tejinder Bagga, BJP spokesperson. Uh-huh. I tweeted. Uh-huh. They sent the police from Punjab to Delhi to pick him up. Yeah, that I know. Yes. And I tweeted about right, it. Right, I said right. it's wrong. Uh-huh. You have to stand on. We have to stand on principle. Exactly. Congress has also done it with with. Look, today Congress will do it. Tomorrow BJP will do it. Third Congress will do it. We will suffer. We Neta will suffer. Neta ka kuch nahi jayega. Ha. We will Wo, suffer yeah. as individuals. So as individuals, whether we are Congress side, Aam Army Party side, BJP side, TMC side. our parties cannot bully others and unless i don't defend your liberty mm-hmm. and you don't defend mine the political party will be no compulsion because it's short sightedness to cheer somebody else's house burning yeah aag ek din aapke ghar mein lagegi 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 ha so unavoidable hai because today when congress supporters see that their leaders are being victimized or they are being um, for lack of another word screwed they will cheer when your leaders are being screwed and you're being victimized right because that frustration is there as this frustration is there for so many years yes perhaps exaggerated because of social media agreed therefore it is important we come to a consensus as a society saying look freedom of speech is sacrosanct hmm. even if i criticize mr modi or you criticize mr rahul gandhi no one's allowed to go after anyone or arvin kejriwal ji uh, if you go after people we'll all unite and save god fir hum apni ladai ladenge ha fir to the civil war ish yeah. situation ha bjp badhiya hai congress badhiya hai tmc badhiya hai hmm. uh, aam aadmi party badhiya hai sappa badhiya hai hmm. but up if you come on one you come on all hmm. we should have the power i've often told congress to articulate this hmm. and that's coming to your question the problem is uh, why the gandhi family let me first address that head on before hmm. i come to rahul and priyanka because I, sure. i i think you want to take that on right yes i think that the gandhi family does not own the congress mm-hmm. the gandhi family are custodians of the congress and hmm. the congress is the nation's party hmm. the congress cannot be owned by anyone the gandhi family are trustees and they trustees because people like me trust them to hold and safeguard the congress mm-hmm. various reasons one that they won't compromise with the rss it's a very important factor for some of them other factors that they've given their life or their families given their life for the country and they genuinely sacrifice their life third that they they're decent people they actually very decent people and i know them personally so yeah. very very decent people mm. so there is decency in their politics So there are various factors why people get attracted to the Gandhi family and they can safeguard. Hmm. Should there be accountability? Of course there should be accountability. But sometimes this accountability people tend to get confused in. Now so let me try and break this out. Mrs Gandhi as president of Congress when she came in took the Congress to victory against somebody as formidable as Atal ji. Yeah yeah. She ran a minority government for 10 years. and she did it quite well no more people from poverty you may blame her that she was super prime minister you may blame her that she was whatever but she was an elected member of parliament she was the chairperson of upa mm-hmm. and she had constitutional powers vested in her what power does rss have why does rss dictate policy why does rss otg should not show this content mm-hmm. compared to them mrs gandhi was elected and she was chairperson of upa Now the legitimate question that people ask is why should a government go to Mrs Gandhi to ask for her opinion A hmm. because she's an MP B she is chairperson of UPA the coalition that was running the government hmm. so the government had to go to the coalition to ask hmm. can we do this or no sure why should a government go to RSS to ask what to do RSS is a non political body right? absolutely mm-hmm. by their own admission right yet they are meeting telling OTT what to do what to do who are RSS 
they will never even be elected they are unelectable mm-hmm. at least mr gandhi is electable mm-hmm. so there is a distinction not that i hold it 100% correct sure i think government should be supreme sure not supreme constitutionally supreme in its running of yeah 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 i understand policy. what yeah. you're trying to say yes government should be supreme i hold that right but there's a distinction there coming to the congress party there is a love for the gandhis for that reason hmm also the they are the they sort of hold the congress in various in various states people have a lot of empathy for both mrs gandhi indira ji and rajiv ji and mrs sonia gandhi for sort of the social revolution she brought in manrega etc so there is some amount of goodwill but accountability must be held hmm. and i personally think that rahul gandhi did hold up accountability when in 2019 he resigned as president hmm. he was president it was a massive loss 2014 he was not president 2019 he was president congress lost as president's performance was not bad hmm He formed the government in Karnataka despite BJP being single largest 2018. He ran the BJP very close in 2017 in Gujarat. He didn't allow BJP to cross three digits. It mm-hmm. was almost Congress formed the government except that they lost Surat. Mm-hmm. Otherwise they would have formed the government. He then formed the government in Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan. Congress was on a momentum and he lost the Lok Sabha elections. Mm-hmm. But he took accountability and he resigned. Who mm-hmm. else resigned? Did the Shogelo Ji resign? I have a lot of respect for these people. Right, right. Uh, I'm very close to Kamal Nath Ji. Did hmm. Kamal Nath Ji resign? Hmm. Who resigned? Only Rahul Gandhi resigned. Hmm. The guy's taken accountability. Hmm. You may say he's failed hundred times, fine, but he took accountability. Hmm. Who else resigned? Nobody else resigned. What did Gulam Nabi Azad do for the Congress? Who, who Gulam Nabi Azad, today in Kashmir, is sitting and making himself a leader in Kashmir? Could Gulam Nabi Azad ever win an election from outside, uh, even in Kashmir, a Lok Sabha election? He couldn't. He won in Maharashtra in Congress waves. Mm-hmm. So. where i do think the gandhis were wrong is having people like gulam nabi azad close to them who are not mass leaders hmm. and i do believe very strongly and i say this because i love rahul to death hmm. that rahul's making that same mistake with the left leaders today close to him okay For example hmm. tukal sahab yogendra yadav hmm. okay what is his contribution why should he be the face of bharat jodo nyay yatra hmm. these people are destroying the congress Like Gulam Nabi Azad destroyed, like these people destroyed. Oh, oh, uh, let me just let me just uh, bring something in here. You said that it, it, there is that the Congress is not the property of the Gandhis. No, and Gandhis are merely custodians, and yeah. that is because there's a certain amount of trust that vests in them across the people, and maybe the Congress majority and, of the Congress right. Congress. Yes, yes, right. And so, from somebody sitting on the outside, from somebody who's not been in India for the last six years, for somebody who was apolitical before that, because I was only what twenty, and only now beginning to get political, and you know, I think I represent a significant amount of people in in this country when I say this. When we think of Modi, and there is a significant chunk yeah. of pro BJP voters who are getting very critical of Modi very fast, right? right? This is a, a often under discussed phenomena, but I've seen it in like yeah. small pockets here and there. When it comes to sort of elections, they're like, if not Modi, who else? Do Correct. you agree with the sentiment that the yes. sentiment exists, right? Absolutely. So it's called the NITA. Tina. Tina. T I N A. Right. There is no one else. There is no one else, right? So there is this T I N A sentiment, this Tina sentiment that exists, and part of it exists because Rahul Gandhi is just somebody that no Indian feels like is competent enough in any way, shape, or form. And no offense to the guy personally, no, you know, I'm pretty sure he's a wonderful human being. Um, is competent enough to run the country. And so what I'm trying to say is. in your view it seems like the gandhis hold a certain amount of trust that they don't own the congress party and they're merely custodians as custodians with that trust would it not then make sense that the gandhis recluse themselves in this situation and say listen it does not look like us as custodians of this historical party that led india to its independence is doing a fair enough job of representing it and maybe we should have other people come across i feel like this bait and switch where we are saying that the people around gandhi are responsible would be a little irresponsible on our part where in fact it might be that the center piece of this puzzle which is rahul gandhi might be the problem in this equation is that not a fair view it's a fair view but let me uh bifurcate this view in two parts okay first i completely disagree with tina while i agree the sentiment is there hmm. there is there is no alternative hmm. can be replaced with sita someone is there always hmm. they can like they can like tina hum hmm. sita ke bhakt hain hmm. someone is there always right So first in our democracy it's not about person it's about parties. So first but I agree that Mr Modi has captured imagination. Now let's look at the positives of Mr Modi. Right. Self-made man, hmm. chief minister for a long time, knows governance and has built an image that Modi is India, India is Modi. 
So yes, who else to Modi? Hmm. Therefore, the alternative out there, before I give you the political answer is, the Congress should give a shadow cabinet. And I've been saying this, I said this. What does that mean? I said this on so many, I've been telling this to the Congress for the last one year, they don't listen to me on this. Hmm. Just imagine, I want you viewers to imagine. Right. Imagine Akhilesh Yadav as Home Minister versus Amit Shah debate on your podcast. Right. I don't think Akhilesh would stand, frankly. Um, yeah. Doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've stirred up imagination. Oh, I see what you mean. So you're saying, a shadow cabinet. Right, okay, okay, okay. Fair okay. point. Right, right, right. Or say, or Sachin Pilot as defense minister because right. he was in. Yeah, yeah. Or say Rajnath Singh Ji. Mm-hmm. On a TV channel. Right, 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 right. That would make Or a Raghuram Rajan. Huh. Or say Nirmala Sitaraman ma'am. Would make views. Bap. Yep. Or uh, my idea was Milan Dora, my friend, but he's left. Everyone <laughs> 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 I'm liking is going. <laughs> <laughs> right. Huh. But, but but anyone else versus Piyush Goel on commerce. Mm-hmm. Just imagine you gave this. Even a Mamta ji mm-hmm. giving her point of view. Now you have a Modi model of governance. Modi ji ne jal se nal, nal se jal laya. Mm-hmm. Wo corporation ka kaam hai frankly. Mm-hmm. Modi ji Manipur ke liye responsible nahi hai but nal se jal corporation job man, Modi ji. Mm-hmm. Now you have a Modi model. You have an Arvind Kejriwal model. You have a Mamta Banerjee model. You have a Congress Chhattisgarh model. You have a Congress Telangana model. You can give people alternative models. We'll take the best of West Bengal here. Hmm. We'll take the health and education of Aam Army Party. We'll take the Telangana software and IT development model. We'll take the Karnataka startup models. We are giving you these models. How many debates will Modi ji do? Hmm. Modi ji is one man. Hmm. You could have at least given an alternative, if not a prime ministerial face. It would have been phenomenal. Hmm. I, as far as views are concerned, it would be phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, you See, politics is stirring up imagination. Right. You have to. You have to take that on. Right, right, right. These guys don't want to do it. Hmm. You have to make hard decisions. Politics is about making hard decisions. Hmm. So if you were given a shadow cabinet, the Modi government in the last one year would be stuttering. Hmm. You didn't do it. Hmm. Now, coming to the Gandhi family in particular, hmm. the last 30 odd years plus, the Gandhis have not been prime minister of the country. Hmm. In fact, the Gandhis have given up their post. Now, you can agree, disagree. When in 2011, the Anna Andolan took place, uh, Mrs. Gandhi could have asked Manmohan Singh Ji to resign and Rahul Gandhi could have become Prime Minister. Whether it was good or bad is a separate issue. Hmm. He could have become, who would have stopped him? Then a brute majority, 206. There's, at that point, everybody was after Rahul Ji, like the way people praise Modi Ji. He could have been Prime Minister. Hmm. The Gandhi family has consciously not become, they've also stayed away. Hmm. Where he's taken responsibilities for the party. He's not become a Prime Minister. He didn't even become a Minister in Manmohan Singh Ji's government, which I frankly think was wrong. Hmm. But, Let's give it to the guy. If he would have become a minister, everyone would have gone running to him. So he's consciously, the family's consciously kept away from power. Hmm. They said, look, let somebody else run the country is better. We will run the party. I think that's not so bad. Hmm. I think that's good because you have a moral perspective. And he does have a moral perspective. Rahul Gandhi does have a moral perspective. So I think that's good. It's not a bad thing to do. But the key is to communicate that effectively. Hmm. That is where the Congress loses the game. Communication. If you go to this India Alliance, what I'm sorry, what I'm talking about, this um, shadow cabinet, which for one year I've been talking to them about, say a Derek O'Brien taking on an Anurag Thakur hmm. in sports, hmm. whatever, you would have such a good, you know, imaginative uh, system. Or now Mawa is suspended, but a Mawa taking on Smithy Rani Ji and women and child, hmm. you could do it, you could create it. Now coming to to what happened with the India Alliance of communication, even with the Congress. It is so bad, so bad the Congress communication and the India Alliance communication that in September when they had the second meeting in Hyatt in Mumbai, where they came up with the name India Alliance, BJP removed a, prior to that they'd come up with the name India Alliance, BJP removed a shagufa saying, ab desh ka naam India nahi Bharat hoga. Mm-hmm. I remember. Yeah, yeah. They were koi karne wala nahi. Uh-huh. Congress leaders and India leaders are fighting that. Hmm. Let them call this great nation India, Bharat, let them call it what they want. Yeah, why are you getting distracted? Don't. Yeah. You say, boss, does Manipur in, exist in India or Bharat? Hmm. Were those women, women wrestlers from India or Bharat? You question them on that. Hmm. Don't go about India or Bharat. Hmm. We are fighting and why is the Prime Minister going in the dressing room? Hmm. We are fighting why is the Prime Minister changing clothes three times a day? Those are not the issues. Or the his day. caste. Which is not the issues of yeah, the day. Yeah, right. People don't care. Nobody cares, yes. The caste census is a good thing to do. Right. Not a bad thing. Sure. Because if you want to give people based on merit, proportional representation, I'm not saying hmm. somebody who's not meritorious should not get. Hmm. Based on merit, if they should get, you need to know what the breakup is so people can, based on merit, occupy based on merit those positions. That's fine. But when you question the Prime Minister's cause, it will backfire. 
oh my god i don't understand how that even came to be like that was such a bad and you know it's just to me it seems so obvious and you know hindsight could be 2020 to everybody on fucking twitter it seems obvious and hindsight could be 2020 but how is that not obvious to rahul gandhi how is it that guys like you who are friends if not political advisors and kapil sibal who's a genius in Mind his game you. right he's so smart i've come to admire this man as a lawyer since i was a kid right all these smart people that exist around rahul gandhi and when he still continues to make these mistakes and i want to give him the benefit of the doubt like let, let me put my heart out on the line i look to me it doesn't matter if bjp or congress is in power my life goes on right and this is most people generally speaking the thing is what i care about in present political climate is for a strong opposition because if there's going to be a strong opposition there is going to be limits to authoritarianism okay. and it could be uh, bjp could be in opposition happy congress could be in opposition happy as long as there's a strong opposition so we are establishing that there is smart gentlemen much like you and much like mr sibbel who sit around or milind yora or milind yora who sit around the congress right or sachin pilot for that matter and yet still when rahul gandhi continues to make these mistakes the public view comes about as if he's the one who's committing those blunders and in that view should he not recluse himself more massively like I, i'm just wondering if you were to stir up public imagination if that's the cause of politics if you were to place i don't know who's an alternative within the congress you'd be able to tell me but as the prime ministerial candidate it would stir up the op- the the imagination a lot more not necessary hmm. because the advisors are so bad and so it's the advisors fault and not the main characters okay let's let's put No, huh. uh, let's put two characters hmm. face to face, Mr. Modi and Rahul Gandhi. Hmm. Okay, let's do a analysis. Okay, Modi ji has some advantages, but Rahul ji also has some. Hmm. It's not too bad a comparison on individual level. But no person outside but, will believe that. Ha. Huh. No, no. So let's yeah, do it. Yeah. I agree because of the perception. You so think we, so? Yeah, we'll come to the okay, perception. Okay, okay, okay. Hmm. Uh, Modi ji is a better orator. Hmm. Has more political experience. Right. Has more governing experience. Right. Has Rahul, united India like never before. Would you say that? I mean, maybe since Indira Gandhi. I think I think Congress also united. So, mm-hmm. uh, let's. Uh, but that comes in his governing experience. Thick, 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 All right. Thick. Okay. Rahul Gandhi is younger. Okay. And fitter. Mm-hmm. Number one. Rahul Gandhi also is a lot more empathetic, according to me, as compared to Mr. Modi. Okay. He's also a lot more democratic. Okay. So they have certain qualities. Of course, governing is a much more bigger quality than these. I, I right, right, I'm not right. disputing. Right. So it's not too bad if you you'd say about you'd say on a scale of ten, you'd say about six and a half, Mr. Modi, four and a half. Uh, three and a half for Mr. Gandhi. It's not too bad a difference. Mm-hmm. Where does this difference become very bad? Look at the people around Mr. Modi: Bhupendra Yadav, Amit Shah, J.P. Nadda. Political minds. Supreme political minds. Yes. At, now I don't want to take the names. Look at the people around Mr. Gandhi. One of them is Dugal Sir. <laughs> Loose. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah, those, yeah. I mean, those guys will not even win an RWA election. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, unki society ka election hai jeetegi. Mm-hmm. The difference is there. In so a head-on building. battle. In a head-on battle. Ha. Huh. Mr Gandhi won't do too badly against Mr Modi. Hmm. Experience which I thought he should have got in UPA he didn't get. Hmm. Fine. You can still get it. Political experience you can still say you can have the best of people to advise you if you are. But where he loses out is the people around him. They're terrible as opposed to the people around Mr Modi. Hmm. Around Mr Modi are hardcore political people. They're not around Mr Gandhi. They so that's the massive problem and those people will occupy that space even if Mr Gandhi is not there, even if somebody else is there. They have to first go. That coterie has to go. Hmm. That's when whoever's president will be able to function. I want to believe you. I really want to believe you. But I think there was just like only the other day there was something about the 10 year anniversary of the Arna Brahul po- podcast that was a podcast i'd say right that really sort of dampened rahul gandhi's uh, image for the first time right like sure. and then from there on i do agree that there's a media machinery at play to reduce him into a trivial figure there are names that Dedicate get called your, right yeah. yeah right the the meme game by the way between bjp and congress is a whole other fascinating yeah. issue we can talk about right and so there is a media machinery in play i'm not denying that but I'm and I'm telling you from the bot like the genuine depth there is no media sort of malice in my head when I say this I genuinely mean this I want to believe you I want to believe we have two strong leaders why not fuck yes like my country has two leaders I can stand behind be like bro koi bhi aa jaye government mein hum dekh lenge duniya ko right uh, my view because I've spent so much time living internationally my concerns of India are a little more international than okay. probably a lot of other people for me what hurt me about or what injured me was people won't look look at us right uh, when i first went to america they would look at us as if like we were it bpo sort of servicemen now they look at us and they're like oh my god you know mm. and so i would love for another strong leader to exist but 
time and again there are these issues like kal parso this was there was this conversation about increasing reservation which i think is so tone deaf given what is really happening in the undercurrent where people are like yaar ye reservation ke chakkar mein meritocracy is going to shits and i'm not saying reservations bad but to increase it past its 50% sort of and so the these tone deaf moments keep appearing in the in 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 popular culture that have lent mr gandhi an image that i think he'll have a very hard time recovering from do you agree Yeah, I think affirmative action is good. Mm-hmm. We have to hold the hands of our fellow citizens. Agreed. Who have not got justice for so many years, but I also believe that the issues of our country are far beyond just this. Mm-hmm. There are a lot more issues, mm-hmm. and those are the issues which are the low hanging fruits. If Mr. Gandhi catches onto the BJP, BC. like unemployment, like oh massive, right? Like a uh, lack of uh, freedoms, mm-hmm. like a uh, lack of savings in households, mm-hmm. massive issues like the gap between the haves and the have-nots have increased like never before. Mm-hmm. These are the issues without being socialistic. Socialism is dead. Mm-hmm. It is dead. Welfareism isn't. Welfareism is why we are an independent country. I think strategic welfareism is still probably it. Is, no, it is a duty bound of India to be a welfare country. Mm-hmm. That's why we became independent. Mm-hmm. Why should my son get better education than say your son? Hmm, if you if you're poor hmm, hmm. basic education should be the same for everybody hmm. basic healthcare should be the same for everybody hmm. that's welfareism why should your child or your wife or your girlfriend or your mother who if you're poor not get the same quality healthcare basic that let i get just because i'm rich see th- again so i'm saying basic hmm. then i could go to a private hospital hmm. and get whatever but the basics should be the same for everybody nutrition should be the same for everybody sure But then, if you look at the Gandhi family, they stand on the other extreme, right? Like, I, I, without naming any names, the the kids in the Gandhi family went to the best schools, and I have nothing against it. I don't, by the way, agree. I think the, the a, a little bit of the divide is good. It creates aspiration. It creates competition. It's good for innovation and all those things. But like, the point is, if Sorry, is I'm a, not against private schools, right? I'm encouraging it. Right. I think there should be more private schools. Hmm. I'm saying the quality of education in a government school should be as good as a private school. And that's that is what a, I'm that is a then, baseline. Then please send your son to a private school or daughter. That's fine. Yeah. So I'm right. not against somebody going there. Right. But then, the, the, as far as espousing these values are concerned, when you're not living those values, and in the age of sort of this brutal transparency that we live in where nothing's hidden where everything's on camera where everything's on fucking instagram and sorry i'm swearing cuz i'm passionate yeah, <laughs> but like when everything's on instagram it's a like you'd have to sort of live those values out to espouse those values and the 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 trouble with the with the gandhi clan has to be it, it has to begin there like if if i see well rahul can't obviously do that but say he's sick and he goes to a government hospital even him walking through the country will get him more favor than almost anything But else he did that in bharat jodo yatra he did yeah yeah and 6, it did actually people. yeah yeah so so i think he's made a positive impact so there we agree on mm-hmm. what i'm trying to say is once you move that part hmm. then it's an aspirational country as you said everyone's on instagram everyone's on social right. media so give people aspirational hopes hmm. look what are we seeing we are seeing ye bura hai wo bura hai bilkul modi ji keh rahe main third largest economy bana hua guess where the votes are going to modi ji because economics will sell so you give people dreams hmm. tell so don't merely say what is wrong with the bjp government yes there are several wrongs but how will you make those bad those ills okay is what was what people will vote you for right. so if i am saying look this government has no policy on ai hmm. and they have no policy on fintech ai right. and they have no policy on web 3.0 also say what our policy will be and how i'll create jobs right also go out then say how I'll solve the paytm problem right go out then give people solutions don't merely be accusatory i agree. i agree that we are accusatory because hmm. it's a terrible government which i agree hmm. but now that we have established as terrible hmm. your eco chambers clapping as is terrible right 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 because, but that eco chamber is already converted yeah yeah what i need is a fence sitter exactly. to now come and vote for me right. therefore i have to go and say listen buddy hmm. you're on a podcast hmm. here's what i will do hmm. you cannot suspend the internet except in extremely in difficult sit, uh, situation only by order of the chief minister and a and a judge of the high court and you know how many of us will start and signing up like, with you yeah Boop. yeah suddenly you'll be like this cannot happen so if law and orders fail hey the government's failed the government will have to deal with it or the government will be suspended your rights won't be taken away because the government's failed in dealing with law and order mm-hmm. today if there's a law and order problem it means the government is failed right so why should you suffer yeah. because the internet is cut Let the government suffer. Yeah, why should my economic suffer? Exactly. Right. So imagine I come to you and I say, "Listen, you're on a podcast. Please come on my side. I'm bringing in this law. If I'm prime minister tomorrow, hmm. only the chief minister has to finally sign it with one judge of a high court. Hmm. So it's not a political decision. There's one judge of a high court. 
two and the chief secretary mm -hmm. or the IT secretary. Sure. These three. And it, that is not more than 24 hours. Within 24 hours, the government is duty bound to bring things under control. If it doesn't, the central home secretary will now have a say in that or internet to be restored. The amount of people get solutions. Right. Don't just say internet is shut. Yes, I understand internet is shut. People are suffering. What is the solution to it? Bring that law. Kya Modi ji bolenge, hame law nahi lagi. He, he'll be in a back foot. Right. Now say, Modi ji, aap is par kya sochte ho? Aap laoge ye kanun, hum laare. Outflank Put them. Put him out. Yeah. Outflank him completely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let us, Rajiv Chandra Shekhar ji is the IT minister. Right. Get him in there. Mm. Mm. You get people solutions. Mm. Tell people, you start an AI in FinTech, you don't have to go to Dubai, we will register in 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Oh my God, that would change so much. 30 minutes will be registered. We, re we recognize uh, uh, crypto, which is asset-based. Right. We will recognize it. We will allow it. However, it will be regulated by a SEBI-like authority. And they'll so be that people, yeah. yeah. So that people will not be taxed. So that people will not be conned. Right. It will be regulated and there will be a tax. Right. How many people go to Dubai? Right. You will not go to Dubai to save that 20-25% because you will have better safety in your country. You have Bring the, the playbook. Bring the goddamn rule. Yeah, yeah, you have the playbook. Yeah. In your, and who's doing it in, in, in Dubai? Indians. Right. Why aren't they doing it here? Create the ecosystem. Create the law and order situation. Say, we'll do it. Right. And we have an authority because we are a democracy. Hmm. We'll have a regulatory authority. So these wallets cannot disappear, whatever, whatever. Hmm. There's no conning. We'll have an authority. We'll even have a, a judicial mechanism. We'll hire new judges. These cases will be resolved within within one month. We'll go to training for these judges and we'll have a new mechanism. So these cases don't drag on like civil cases. You'll have a separate, you have separate um, branches and courts hmm. and they'll resolve quickly. Hmm. Build a tribunal. Come with a solution. Hmm. Stir up the imagination of people. Mm -hmm. How many of these IT people will come to you? So many. Because God knows they are like paid yeah. in their asses. Yes. Come out there and say, listen, uh, why should a why should a, why should a restaurant have to shut at 12, 13 the night? That's a good question. Why? So here's what we're gonna do. We come to government, wherever our state governments are, restaurants will be allowed to operate. Police will be there. However, police is not, if you're drunk, you will not be arrested. Hmm. The police, like abroad, will drop you home. We'll have 24-hour public transport. Hmm. You know, most crimes is least in cities which have nightlife. The crime is lower. Obviously, New York, London. Oh, I see. Internationally Night. speaking. Huh? Internationally speaking. Uh -huh. Well, nightlife is. Right. Where's more crime? Uh, in some cities in Uttar Pradesh or Mumbai? Sure. Mm -hmm. Where nightlife is, crime will always be because there's people, there's life, there's activity. Mm -hmm. See, we'll encourage there's recreation. Life. There's recreation. You let off steam you without, huh? You have now you have a whole new avenue of service industry. Right. We will not model police you. We will not say why you're drinking so many drinks. Right. We will not ask you why you're eating this. Come out with solutions. We will help you create. If you're a chef, we will encourage you. Hmm. We will have our own. Yeah, less licenses on restaurants, for instance. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Restaurants are today, why should restaurants be? And after paying so much taxes, restaurants are still suffering because a police or an excise guy can go in and... Yeah, get you, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is the reality. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Less licenses on restaurants, less right. uh, this thing. We'll bring in a policy. If you're running a legitimate business with more than 10 staff, which is housekeeping, waiters, bartenders, etc. Why should, why should women not be bartenders? I'm asking you this question. Uh, wait, who's stopping them? Uh, but in some states, these rules are. We'll remove this off. Let there be women bartenders. Really? I think they still exist in some states. Achha. So we will create a mechanism hmm. where you have public transport all through the night. Take a metro and go home. Take a bus and go home. That's okay. Party the night away. Mm -hmm. We want our youngsters to, to, to have a good life. Why should spas shut in the evening? Hmm. I, I finish my job at nine. How will I go to, yeah. Let me go for a massage but or a haircut. You don't think, salons shut in the night. You don't think this is a more sort of upper middle class Could problem? Could be, but at some point start stirring up the imagination. Now, these are all BJP voters, most of them. Right. Yeah, they're all BJP voters, yeah. But they're not BJP voters because of the what you think is communal. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. They're not BJP. Not everyone who votes BJP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, but they're friends at us. Right. Give them something better. Why have they voted BJP? Because they thought Mr. Modi will transform the... The Indian economy, economy, the national interest, Fair? national integrity, foreign policy. This, yes. this is a loud cheering group of Mr. Modi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very not bad people. Yeah. Very rich. Not bad people. No. Good people. Exactly. Good, decent Indian citizens. Right. Why can't you get them on your side? Hmm. Mr. Modi also started out with middle class and, Indians. And him. they would relate to Mr. Gandhi a lot more because of their economic situation. Coming back to the comparison between Mr. Gandhi and Mr. Modi. Hmm. A young guy, t-shirt, fit looking guy, talking, saying, look, I do this, I understand this, I will be there, I want to do this for you. Suddenly, rather than calling them chore hmm. or communal or whatever that we are calling them, say, look, this is what I want to do for you guys. Hmm. This is my vision. Can you guys help me? Hmm. And you'll have them on your side. Hmm. I'm talking about one audience that will stir up imagination. And 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 this is an audience that's on social media massively. Imagine it is stirred up the imagination. Hmm. 
suddenly you have a momentum going politics is about momentum mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so as things stand right now momentum wise what do you think is going to happen in these elections i said this um, on a podcast and i'll say this uh, i'll repeat it Wait, and you, i'll explain you've it. been on other podcasts i've been on a, i've cheated on you <laughs> I've cheated on you. Shit, dude. Damn. Yeah, when is that one coming out? So, we, like, strategically. Huh? Yeah, we are strategically. <laughs> Go but, on, tell but, me. But, but, okay, huh. so, I've said this, and uh, I'm a big fan of quantum physics, right? Mm-hmm. So, let me explain this. Mathematically, it's possible to go faster than the speed of light. Hmm. But the laws of physics prevent you from going faster than the speed of light. For you viewers to understand, if I'm having this coffee, and if I could go faster than the speed of light, and i threw this coffee on the wall you guys would see the coffee reach the wall faster than it actually reach hmm so while it's mathematically possible physics doesn't the laws of physics don't allow you similarly mathematically it's possible for the congress to beat the bjp the laws of politics won't allow it at this moment hmm unless you see a tectonical shift in politics happening hmm for the congress to beat the bjp hmm what the congress is doing is it's saying okay the bjp won't win too much in south india and east india which is true mm. it may not mm. but those are about 200 odd seats mm. in the 300 seats of north and west i'm talking round figure i'm not talking 543 sure, you know, sure. round figure in the 300 seats of the north and the west the bjp strike rate is 90% right unless we don't get a significant chunk in those 90% those 300 seats south and east of india don't come into the equation too much right for us to bring them into equation you have to win in north and west india hmm. right now the bjp strike rate is 90% in north and west india i genuinely think that uh, maharashtra hmm. is a low, low hanging fruit people are not very happy with this bjp ajit pawar uh, Alliance, government right. they're very unhappy Sim- and they sympathy for the congress and uh, the other two factions similarly you could do well in madhya pradesh rajasthan chatisgarh despite losing mm. you still even a bad situation have 40 45% vote share mm. it's not all lost but unless you don't pick up seats there south india and east india don't come into play mm. alternatively look at mr modi mr modi as a politician apart from his political uh, places that he's gone he's gone the most to kerala and tamil nadu Hmm. Because Mr. Modi is trying to get new ground for the BJP, where hmm. BJP does not exist. Hmm. So Mr. Modi's most trips have happened to Kerala, Tamil Nadu, and Odisha, hmm. where the BJP is not. Kerala exactly. and Tamil Nadu don't exist, hmm. and Odisha they are second. Now, a lot of Congress supporters, well-meaning people, tell me, "Oh, BJP will never grow in Kerala, never grow in Tamil Nadu." This is a fallacy. Fifteen years ago, nobody would thought would have thought that BJP would be in government in Assam and Haryana. Fifteen hmm. years ago. 10 years ago nobody would have thought that the bjp or 12 years ago would be the only party in government the largest party in maharashtra 8 hmm. years ago nobody would have thought bjp would be the number 2 party in west bengal and odisha hmm. we're talking about 8 years ago right that's, that's not too decade. far ago yeah why do you think 8 years hence the bjp won't be the number 2 party in kerala tamil nadu because they're doing the work while other people are imagining because mr modi is trying to get new grounds right, right, therefore right. as politician mr modi's most trips have been kerala and tamil nadu apart from elections i'm not talking elections he's made most trips to these two states hmm. because that's where he wants to see the bjp grow hmm, hmm, hmm. so what's happening is while the congress is ceding its territory the bjp is trying to hunt for new territory hmm. congress is not able to defend it or get new territory now unless the congress doesn't counter attack and start picking up the bjp territory in north india and west india where actually in maharashtra there's a lot of sympathy for congress hmm. the congress will fall back and the bjp will continue to gain hmm. i also see another trend in politics you see where the congress is winning let's see the 50 odd lok sabha seats day one the congress didn't win de- defeating the bjp hmm. the congress won defeating the regional parties yes the bjp won defeating the congress and regional parties right. in their 200 odd seats what i'm trying to say is the national elections people are voting for national parties hmm. so hmm. increasingly it's becoming congress versus bjp, BJP. with the regional parties in the even Camps. in a state like delhi or union territory like delhi the congress was number 2 aam aadmi party despite being in government was number 3 and bjp right. of course won all the seven lok sabha yes right in lok sabha yeah yeah so what i'm saying is national elections people want national parties hmm. therefore where it's a congress versus a regional party people are voting congress and where it's congress versus bjp maybe they're voting bjp but the idea is to vote for a national party hmm. so the congress must never forget it's a national party hmm. it's india's first national party right it cannot forget that right and this with some of its supporters do this north south divide this thing is terrible for the brand congress right. because these guys 
in their two minutes of fame or those 400 retweets or those little applause on yeah. on social media of the converted already right. are damaging brand congress that's not the gandhi's represent that's not what the congress represents hmm. but they are damaging it to think voters from north india are illiterate or goba drinking voters is yeah, terrible that's a stupid idea you can legitimately raise the point of of maharashtra karnataka tamil nadu not getting its fair share in taxes i right. think it's a legitimate point to raise right there's a decent way of doing it right there's a right way of doing it there's a correct way of doing it yeah. but to say that these are gaumutra drinking people gobar worshipping people the same madhya pradesh voted congress yeah 40% of madhya pradesh still votes congress for gobar peete hmm. gobar wale hmm. aur tumne alienate kar diya yaar why are you alienating yeah. people politics build bridges yeah. don't burn bridges and especially in a country that's so like there's so many labels in this country it's such a heterogeneous country why would you make it worse and why are you homogenizing people huh. therefore giving advantage to the bjp right. the bjp for all its criticism what is my criticism of the bjp hmm. it wants every as a homogeneous unit hmm, hmm. whereas we believe in diversity hmm, hmm. and you are giving it on a platter to BJP hmm, hmm, hmm. just to alien just to get like retweets on Twitter of, of the people who don't matter hmm, 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 hmm. right they are already converted please get the people who are not converted onto your side right and that's when the BJP will find it difficult hmm and you can attack it mr gandhi can attack it just to get a numeric figure down because like what you say sounds exciting to me interesting to me i am no political professional and i don't understand the depth of it but you know i'm i'm in agreement with a lot of what you say in terms of sort of targeting the fence sitters and sort of stirring up the imagination of the upper middle class in certain ways and so on right but that's not the present reality and youngsters and youngsters but that's not the present reality as far as the present reality goes where do you think does the ball swing and how hard does it swing in that direction it swings bjp it swings bjp uh, how hard but Oh, completely at this moment. Like mm. I told you, the laws of politics is BJP is winning. Pro o- over three hundred. I don't. I mean, it's difficult to say over three hundred. I won't give a number, mm. but percentage wise, they're very high. Okay. But if the Congress listens to what I'm saying, the Congress can still do very well and restrict the BJP to way below two fifty. It can, and I know a lot of people who see this will laugh and say, "Nay, what are you saying?" But in politics, it's never over till the last vote is counted. Mm. Never over till then. Mm. So you can still fight. There is so much, so much that people of this country, this great country, want mm. without alienating them. They will come on our side if we are ready to only reach out to them without being left loonies. Okay, look. If I can be of any help, I'm sure you're connected very well in the Congress. I am interested in having the opposition represent itself on my show and to the people at large, yeah. right? Even if it's not my show, even if it's somebody else's, even if it's the television, I want to hear more because there is a certain discourse domination, and that discourse domination, fine, I'm okay with it, but it would be a lot better if I heard from, say, Mr. Sibyl, yeah. even Mr. Gandhi. I don't know how possible that is. So if there's anything you can do in that regard, I am available. I'm glad to give you all the numbers. I'm yeah. glad to make a phone call. Yeah. I'm glad to talk to people. Yeah. I would do that. I'll drive up and I, yeah and mm. I think and I think that is the ba- basis of democracy right unless we don't put our point of view across mm. and we have a medium mm. simply and this is another problem I have as with the present Congress blaming people crying victim no be an alpha look why is Mr Modi liked because he's an alpha he is an alpha let's be honest about super it. honest yeah he's an alpha mm-hmm. the country shifted it wants an alpha right it wants a leader that leads from the front Mrs Gandhi was an alpha she was you cannot be all this oh I'm go- I'm not saying you have to be You crude. cannot be a bechara. Yeah, you, you cannot be a bechara yeah, leader. Victim huh. card. Uh-huh. I'm not saying be crude. Right. I'm not saying be rude. Right. I'm not saying be dominating or aggressive. Right. Um, I even think Mr. Modi at times has crossed the line, especially hmm. demonetization, laughing when people were suffering. I think hmm. that was a terrible thing to do. Hmm. But he's an alpha. He's decisive. He takes decisions. He's he's there. Mm-hmm. Be an alpha. Go out there. Instead of crying victim, hmm. pick up the phone. Talk to people in the media. You have a problem with. Solve it. I thought it was terrible to boycott those 14 anchors. Hmm. I thought it's terrible. Mm-hmm. Why would you boycott mm-hmm. people? Mm-hmm. Reach out. You have a problem. Right. Pick up the phone. Like when we were on a podcast. Right. I spoke to Ansh. Right. You spoke S- to Ansh. Ansh. Yeah. Samit spoke to Ansh. Then I spoke to you. Right. And and we, we connected. Spoke, yeah. Pick up the podcast phone. Speak. Right. What happened? Do the Vivek Ramaswamy playbook. Yeah. Because he was everywhere where people did not like him, and he was articulate, and he made a point, and then he converted. You people. didn't like me. No, no, no. No, I mean, what is it? 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 What is it?
कांग्रेस पार्टी कैन रेप्लीकेट देर इज नो फास्टर मूवमेंट दैट विलपन इन दोलिटिकल स्पीयर दैट पिक अप दोन स्पीक टू पीपल मेक अ कॉल से लुक आई फील योर प्रोग्राम आर Sometimes unfairly targeting us. We would like to put our point of view. Right. Could you do an interview with us? Kitni baar wo mana karega? Hmm. Ya karegi. Hmm. Talk. Reach out to people. Hmm. Don't. I like I said. I feel ninety five percent of the debates are anti the opposition. Sure. Uh, anti the gov. Uh, anti opposition. Pro government. Right. Okay. Hmm. But I make my point. Right. And honestly, who's watching them? Like we get more views than the debates. If not now, in like five years, we'll get way more views than no, the no, debates. Nobody watches me. Huh? Yeah, no, people <laughs> yeah, watch right. you because you're a good-looking yeah. young chap who's still twenty-five. Go, go, twenty-eight, twenty-eight, twenty-eight. <laughs> 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28 yeah. But you get the point. Like, yeah, I, I think alternative media is taking completely. over very completely fast, and nobody trusts those debates. Nobody can hear nothing on those debates. It's all talking heads fighting with each other for nothing. That's true, but yeah. but you know, I'll tell you my experience when I go on those debates. Hmm. Whichever the anchors, even people who say are biased, I don't feel that. Hmm. What I do is I speak to the anchor. I say, "Can I just have my say? Hmm. I don't care what you're saying." I don't care about your line. I want to put my say. Are you okay with me putting my say? Then I'll come to your show. Sure. The anchor is okay. Yeah. I've never had an issue. Maybe one out could happen. Mm. That's not the rule. That's the exception. Right. I always have my say, and then I tweet my say, mm. and I get the traction, which is why you called me on your show. Sure. Yeah. So I'm just trying to say is you have to. It's politics. No one's going to make it easy for you. You have to create the space for yourself. Right. And that's what it is. Politics is about creating space. People didn't make it easy for Mr. Modi. No, he went through a lot. Yeah, rightly or wrongly, yeah. he went through the court cases. He went through this. He made the space for himself. Right. Now you can say right or wrong. Completely. Some of it issue. I don't agree with things he did. Right. Uh, but the point is, it wasn't easy for him. No, he made the space. Why would you expect him to make it easy for you? Right. Yeah. I mean, no. who's going to turn over backwards and say, "Acha, aaja, tu bhai jab." Yeah. Main to, main to zindagi mein bore ho gaya yar. Prime minister bana bana. Tu aaja. Tu aaja. Ab mere liye le. There is no Koi inheritance in politics. No inheritance. Politics has to be fought for. So you have to fight. Right. And that's the point. That's what we learn. Yeah. Right. That's absolutely right. fair. Is there a question you have for me? Do you at times when you do these podcasts, does it? Bother you that there might be pressure, or no? You never thought about it. I have um, not had any pressure of any sort up until. Um, well, I'm not even anticipating any. I don't think. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure if the bigger podcasters like the Ranveers of the world have any pressures in the background. Um, no, I don't bother. Like honestly, if I could, I will do this as long as I can do this in a free and fair manner. As right. long as I can sit with you and as well as sit with somebody who's pro government and talk to my full extreme, right? The minute I feel like, oh my God, somebody is behind me looking over, I'll do something else that's more freeing. Correct. Yeah, I'll do something else because then it's that's it's not it's not f- it's not fine by me. So it's the basis behind. of for everything is freedom. To me, yes. Correct. I'm a big fan. Right. So now again, there's an audience for that. There's a voter base for that. Mm-hmm. We can reach out to that voter base. Right. But we aren't. Mm-hmm. What we're doing is we're saying cousins, which does not appeal to you. Yes. So I'm saying there are different horses for different courses. Right. Let's start having conversation with different people, and unless you don't have that conversation, rather than being confrontational. Hmm. We will lose. Even Krishna, when he goes, at first he says he goes for peace, right? Mm-hmm. He mm-hmm. does the Kauravas look. Yeah, yeah. Five grams. Ha ha. Pehle bhi five grams bolte do. Ha. Rakho apni dharti tamam. Mai khushi se rege parijan par asina uthaige. Right. Even he goes for peace. Yeah. Have a conversation. Right. That's the point. Right. Even Ramji sends Hanuman first. Yes. F- first with peace. Yes. So, the idea is you must always have peace. You must always have a conversation. And the BJP has done that fantastically well. To their credit, they've they've reached out to guys like us. They've um, they've they've sent spokespeople and uh, people who are aligned with them to our podcasts. And I mean, we are a small fraction still, but growing. And they've done a brilliant job at communicating with the voter. Like the WhatsApp groups being filled is not by accident. Correct. And it is. If I were to speak of it in pure strategic terms, it's a brilliant mass. Like it's brilliant, the best thing they've done. Some of it is really ridiculous. Sure, it's of course all, all, WhatsApp history, but content, but, content but content is content. But content is content. And content and people are reading it. Yeah, and people are believing it. Right. And it, it's as simple as this. As um, the other day, somebody told me, "A pehli baar diye jalege." You know, this was one of the Diwali shows, and Aditya Nath ji said, "Ke har ghar mein diye jalao." This is prior to the Ram Mandir thing. Hmm. एंड मैंने कहा यार मेरे घर में तो पहले से डी जलते थे इसमें बीजेपी का क्या कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन है राइट तो आई मीन यू नो दे जस्ट लैच ऑन टू बैंड वैगन दैट इज ब्रांड आउट ऑफ इट या विच इज नथिंग टू डू विद एंड डी जल रहे हो बीजेपी का घर होगा 
अरे तो मेरे घर में तो पहले से डी चल हाँ, हाँ, मोदी जी आदित्यनाथ जी का क्या कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन है राइट 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 नाउ जॉर्डिंग दिस राम मंदिर थिंग दे सेट के सारे मंदिरों में कि आप साफ सफाई करो विच इज अ गुड थिंग माई मॉम हुज ऑल्सो माई ब्रदर समाज शहजाद हुज अ मुस्लिम लेडी एवरी मॉर्निंग पार्ट ऑफ अर रूटीन इज और आफ्टर अराउंड इलेवन इश फॉर द सन शी सेट्स आउटसाइड अ मंदिर विथ हर ग्रुप ऑफ फ्रेंड्स इन हर एरिया और उसके बाद मंदिर को साफ करती बिचारी और उसमें मोदी जी का क्या है वो बेचारी चालीस साल से कर रही है गणेश मंदिर राइट आउट सेट वॉट इज मोदी जी का टू डू बट वो देखिएगा तो अरे इनकी मम्मी भी बीजेपी वोटर हो गई लैश ऑन टू समथिंग अब मुझे बताओ एक लॉजिकल थी हर मंदिर रोज साफ होता है मस्जिद भी रोज साफ होती है मोदी जी का क्या कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन है राइट बट ही लैश्ड ऑन टू समथिंग विच इज ऑब्वियस राइट एंड इट क्रिएट्स द परसेप्शन और मोदी जी सेम पीपल आर क्लीनिंग मंदिर अब मुझे आप बताओ कोई एक मंदिर जो रोज साफ नहीं होता मुझे बताओ आप जानते हैं प्रेगमेटिकली पोलिटिक्स इज टू पार्ट इट्स द वर्क डन एंड द talk created around it right. and both of them have been done or at least to my, to my impression both of them have been mastered very well by this government Correct. and i feel like with the congress maybe the works done the talks very little in fact almost deficient absolutely hmm. and that is the problem and for example the congress has let go of the legacy of nehru ji indira ji rajiv ji hmm. in this entire ram mandir inauguration why would you let go of the of the legacy of rajiv ji who actually opened the locks Hmm. Maybe throw court order. Hmm. He didn't appeal a court order. Hmm. Why would you? Who did the Shilanias? Whose last interview said there should be a Ram Mandir? Hmm. Who started his election campaign from Ayodhya? Hmm. Wh- who said about bringing in Ram Rajya? Why would you let go of Ram Rajiv Ji? And that should be in the media. Like why we should we hear anything of Rajiv Ji in the media? And a man who brought in the IT revolution. Right. Whether you like, dislike, whatever. You sure. may think whatever. About As a political figure, he's a miss. He, he did. Yeah. yeah. Congress doesn't talk about Rajiv Gandhi. Right. It doesn't talk about Rajiv Gandhi. And the it's busy Congress talking about Modi's caste. And Modi's clothes. Yeah. And Modi's which clothes. Which is not. Yeah. Indira Ji never took her political opponent's name. Hmm. Why are we taking Mr. Modi's name? Hmm. Like play play smartly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pradhan Mantri, other than Pradhan Mantri, I'm. Upon his name, why are we taking him? He let him be an equal. And you think this is all the advisors, huh? Yeah, I think. Huh. I I do think. Why could why could the Pandavas win the war? Because they're Krishna. Sure. But then they're a smaller a, army. Yeah. They're right. a smaller army. The Kauravas are a bigger army. Way bigger army. Ten times as big, right? Hmm. It was nine versus eighteen. Hmm. They had eighteen groups. These were nine. Hmm. But they had Krishna. Hmm. You know, it's a very interesting um, story in Mahabharat. I just uh, recollected. Karan and Arjuna fighting, hmm. and every time Arjun would hit the arrow, Karan's rath would go behind by a few feet, quite a few feet. Hmm. Every time Karan's arrow would hit, Arjun's rath would go behind just a few meters. Hmm. But, uh, Krishna would praise Karan. What a shot! What mm. a shot! Mm. So Arjun says, "Bhagwan, I am sending his rath behind few feet. Right. He's barely moving my few meters, few, few inches, a few huh. centimeters, few inches. Huh. And you're praising him. Huh. And Krishna turns and says, 'Buddy, I am sitting on your rath, <laughs> and Anuman ji is on top, huh. and yet he's moving a few inches.' Right. And when 18 days that battle gets over, Krishna first asks Arjun, 'You get down with the rath.' And after Arjun gets down, Krishna gets down, mm. and the rath burns." And Krishna and Arjun is like, where was the rat? Hmm. And he said, no, Arjun, uh, Karan had destroyed it at the beginning. Hmm. You need a Kar, you need a Krishna. We need good. That's when you the balance of the war was won. Duryodhan thought he had Krishna's army, mm-hmm. but he did not have Krishna's brain. But he didn't have Krishna's brain. or his like blessing. The yeah, blessing. Mm-hmm. we need that. Mm. Mm. Simply being aggressive will not help us. We need Krishna's mind, Krishna's blessing. Mm. Osho says something amazing. Krishna begins where everyone else ends. Mm. That's what we need. By the way, huge Osho fan myself. Oh, huge. huge! You know, Osho's uh, Osho's ashram is five minutes away from my house. Where in Delhi? In Pune. Ha, ha, KP. Me. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I say both club road, five minutes away. We were like, I cannot say this enough. Osho is revolution. The greatest man to have walked our earth in recent times. I bloody fucking agree. Like what happened to him towards the end? I don't yeah. know. There is more than yeah. what we see, and like nobody messes with the American government and g- comes out yeah. unscathed. But as far as philosophy and spirituality go, oh my fucking god! You know, Especially him in Hindi. Him in Hindi is and you know I met Osho. You have as a kid. Really. Eighties. My father. So Osho Kore ka pak. We both. Right, right, right. Two, it's it's for those who understand Pune. It's five minutes away. Huh. But basically. Uh, Now the road is the crossing has become slightly bigger, but huh. it's five minutes away. Yeah, sure. Uh, and uh, when they 
ashram was being built the original ashram hmm. before osho got the bungalows and all so hmm. i know people i know the people who sold it to osho and all that my father was into construction and road construction etc so dad got all that work done including the he's built a japanese garden over a nala it's called nala park hmm. so dad took me to meet osho as a kid i have this one vivid memory of osho hmm. that i met with dad i met osho with mm-hmm. dad and this normal guy sitting in his beautiful robe this is after america ha huh? Yeah, yeah, he this moved to Pune. Ha, he moved to Pune. Ha, right. And those days, Pune police used to be there to see what he's saying and record it. Ha. So because they were so scared of what he will say, and yeah. this guy was Osho would say everything. Yeah. So the police would have people there to record what he's saying, so if they could be a case against. Right. So I met Osho at uh, at when the Nala Park, Osho Park was being built. Uh huh. Which was a Nala then. He was building a Japanese garden. I met him once. That's so interesting. And he, he, by the way, him. I don't recollect really much about that. Yeah, yeah. I remember meeting. You were a meeting. kid. Complete, five uh, six five six yeah yeah I don't know, six, seven, but yeah. even then like uh, my view is Osho, <laughs> he was very like I don't think Indira Gandhi liked Osho right there is a lot of uh, back and forth between them also from because there was pressure with the plus with the things you'd say like Osho would say that Gandhi is actually violent huh. with this protest right way, so he very, very controversial very, very controversial and then he would, those days and he would take on Hindu हाँ 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 पता नहीं आज बोल पाता कि नहीं नहीं बोल पाता नहीं बोल पाता आज वो जेल में होता ये सरकार उसको जेल में डालती Ah right I would I would expect you to say that No no to dalti I had to make that watch on the BJP <laughs> But thank you so much Tehsin this has been an absolute pleasure I cannot wait to have you back again Thank you buddy yeah. it's great to have you Thank, thank you so If you're passionate about conversations like this and if you think Prakhar I'd like to listen to more conversations like this then I must tell you there is a subscribe button right here and a bell icon right next to it and it's your moral obligation to press that Press the subscribe button and I'll see you around for more conversations just like this